trajectory. Hi. Hello. Welcome. While I adjust my camera at the last minute, the absolute <laughs> last minute. Hello. Welcome, everyone. It is Friday night here on Saving Throw, and that means it is time for Wild Card. So thank you to all of you mysterious strangers out there in the chat who are moseying on in and joining us this evening. Uh, join us, join us please, as we follow Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary as it winds its way from settlement to settlement in the vast open expanse of the Weird West and all of the shadowy places in between. We will be playing through the pinnacle entertainment group setting Deadlands, the Weird West, the newest edition, and we will be using the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition rule set, the newest edition as well, because it's nothing but the latest and greatest for us here at Wild Cards. Uh, if it is not the latest and greatest, we kick it directly to the curb. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman, and I am the ringmaster or GM around these parts. And uh, thank you again for joining us tonight. We have, as per usual, a show in store for you. But before we get to the show, let's meet the people who make that show up. So everyone, tonight, I would like you to tell me, for I have completely forgotten, and all of our fine friends out there in chat, your name, your character's name, and a brief physical description of your character. I would also like to know, if you feel like sharing it, what is the most important thing that your character has ever lost? <laughs> Who would like to go first? I'll go first. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, too slow. Very well. Um, hi, everybody. My name's Grav Gladi, and I play Victor Parrish, Ooh. who is the trick. What is it's a trick shooter of the carnival. He is played by and looks a lot like Josh Holloway from Lost Fame. I mean, um, is he played he, by Josh Holloway or is he played by you, Garav? I oh. ate Josh Holloway a few summers ago. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've noticed he doesn't exist in the world. He doesn't have any acting jobs. It's because I mean, I he's inside. Around, yeah. He's inside me. Oh, okay. so you like you like got Mega Man powers from him? Or exactly. Kirby, like actually, Mega more Man. like well, Kirby. Well, I think it's powers. more like Kirby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mega Man doesn't eat the people. You're right. That is a Kirby. Uh, well, he? there was that one time. Well, we don't talk about that. Anyways, um, Victor Parrish uh, is a grim-looking uh, early '30s, uh, uh, slightly uh, thin man with dark hair and a face. An important aspect of personhood. I um, assume although before now that he didn't have a face. Um, all right, very well. Uh, face and all, tell us, what is the most important thing that Victor Parrish has ever lost? Um, Victor Parrish lost his mother and father. And how did Victor lose them? They sold him for $13. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty rough. Um, so not necessarily something that you lost so much as Victor lost the ability to grow up knowing his mother and father because they were either very desperate or very terrible people. Mm -hmm. Probably both. Um, how old was Victor when he was sold? Uh, nine. Okay, Ooh. tragic. So old enough to have established a familial relationship with people um, before yeah. before being shipped off. All right. Okay, yeah. that is uh, that is that is quite a loss, Victor Parrish. Who would like to go next? I'll go. Very well. Hi, I am Megan Caves, and I play Celestina Moldovanu. Uh, Celestina looks like this, basically. Uh, I, I put a lot of thought into the costume. I'm like, that's the character, not necessarily beyond that. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say her hair's a little bit lighter than this, though, at the bottom. That's what I would say. But her whole demeanor is um, just weird. <laughs> She's... Um, it's sort of like uh, like a, a a goth kid who just really wants to make people uncomfortable that's kind of how celestina dresses um yeah 
And then was there something else before what I lost? Did I miss something? Nope. I think so far you're batting a thousand. Well, Celestina lost her mother, her father, and her brother. Oh, as they were where did one of me? Damn! As they were murdered right in front of her. Wait till oh. you get to me. <laughs> <laughs> my uncle, my auntie, my I dog, lost the entire cat. state of Illinois. <laughs> the whole state. Wow. Um, how old was Celestina when uh, she lost her mother, father, and brother? Seven. <laughs> Seven. Seven. And Seven. younger than me. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is both a uh, numerically greater loss at a uh, <laughs> at a younger, more impressionable age. So, uh, so far, uh, Celestina's got the best um, loss. She wins. She this wins is not a competition. Loss. She's hashtag most fucked up of us all. But this hey, this is maybe true. <laughs> we've only met half of the crew so far. Uh, so do either of the rest of you have the hashtag greatest loss? I don't have the greatest <laughs> loss. Everything's a hashtag. But I've got a loss. All right, I'll do tell the us rest about it. Them. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen and I am playing Midas Buchanan, who is a, a lanky middle-aged toy maker. Uh, he, he tends to be like very thin and have kind of an intense look. Um, he's always kind of disheveled and working on toys and has a, a bit of a stutter and everything, and uh, also has a small mechanical uh, uh, boy that he has made that follows him around most of the time. He's made of clockwork and his name is Christopher. Um, and that's honestly probably more like recognizable than Midas's looks most of the time. So, was that a quote unquote for the clockwork? Uh, yeah. Was that he an is, implication made of, of real boy little boy parts clockwork. being in there? <laughs> the C in Christopher stands for clockwork. <laughs> Not corpse. The H stands for human? <laughs> no, it's for humanoid. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Uh, but uh, the uh, this is not as big as those, but the, the biggest thing that Midas has lost um, is his mind. Is all his early <laughs> inventions. Because oh. uh, he invented a bunch of things um, when he was training at Smith and Robards and in his, oh. in his early career working with, uh, with Schwartz oh, okay. uh, because they were kind of a partnership for a while. And he was sort of like the one creating the toys and making the like early uh, new science toys and inventions to like give out to people. And uh, when Schwartz like basically took all of the credit from him and cut him out of the business. Uh, Midas vowed that he wouldn't make those things again. Like he, he disavowed the, the early inventions that he has made and he's been making new things. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, that, that would be uh, very professionally and personally upsetting. Uh, it still puts you at s solid uh, bronze medal loss uh, so far, uh, but hey, they can't all be winners. There's room um, to lose more stuff. <laughs> Just give us oh, a couple that's true. seasons. Numerically, uh, you did lose the most things, um, that's so we that's have to give you extra points for that. Uh, Quantity-wise, uh, your loss is greatest on technicality. Uh, so um, finally... Trying to tie it all up with the greatest loss in every category, we have... <laughs> Hi, my name is Dom Zook, and I play Buster Buzz Callahan, uh, who is the uh, cowboy bard. And he looks, uh, he's got kind of strawberry blonde hair, uh, a uh -huh. little bit longer than mine. Um, a mustache with a little Van Dyke thing going on right here. Um, uh, about 30-ish or so. Uh about 5'10", five, 5'11", five, or so, something like that. Wears pretty much what I'm wearing, but he's got suspendies. Uh, and uh, he's got these two, uh, like, gauntlets, wrist, wrist protectors. Called suspenders. No, no, they're gauntlets, Megan. <laughs> when they're and, on your wrist, they're continue. gauntlets. And that's what he's got on there. Um... And he carries two guns at his side with a sawed-off shotgun kind of mounted onto his belt in the back. Uh, Sounds uncomfortable to sit down. It's not. All right. <laughs> it's a very soft shotgun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cushioned. It's a soft-off shotgun. 
<laughs> and the <laughs> thing he uh, the, that he lost is the fabled island city of Atlantis. Millions of people died that day. Uh, and all the things that they invented, um, too. So, oh man, including his mother, father, <laughs> yeah. and stepmother and father, since they yeah. were divorced and had mm -hmm. added more people to their mm -hmm. family. And his also, puppy, boom, Atlantean clones of all of those people were also lost. Yeah, so that's pretty bad. Uh, and his virginity hmm. uh. was lost when the city <laughs> sank beneath the waves. Yeah, that's why it sank. <laughs> it. He was he was doing something else at the time. <laughs> Pretty earth shattering. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, fair, fair. And then, what is your actual answer? <laughs> I'm not telling you. Um, I know how this works. I know how this game works. Uh, the thing that he lost um, is uh, um, his his ability to uh, um, to shoot. On, uh, the way that he used to be able to, um, and be the be the trick shot. And what did or does that mean to Buzz? Um, it's sort of a, a loss of uh, his sense of self a little bit, and I think the circumstances surrounding how he sort of he sort of sent himself into uh, its self exile a bit, uh, and uh, he's lost some um i would say some respect for himself and also some uh um self-esteem uh, about it too makes sense all right so taking it uh inward rather than uh outward and upward mm -hmm. for a very personal uh internal loss thank you very much for that thank you to all of you for your answers and uh, thank you again to all of you mysterious strangers who are maybe still making your way through the swinging front door of uh, the wild cards chat welcome if you're new here or if you're just getting here and you like me forget everything from week to week uh we are a uh, saving throw we're an independent channel and we run all kinds of fun ttrpg content here on twitch week after week sometimes day after day at our busiest uh just trying to bring some uh some levity some entertainment and uh, some interesting new takes on games and content to your eyeballs on a weekly basis. If you like what we are doing here, if you are having a fun time, if you enjoy uh, getting to see what we bring to the table, virtual or otherwise, each, after, we, each week after week, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us. It helps us keep going and helps us continue to pay rent on the studio that we are still paying for despite not being able to currently sit inside of uh and it allows us to do more and better things with the channel as we move forward uh, as a fun side effect any cash tips or bit cheers over 100 bits go towards unlocking reward tiers which can have sometimes small sometimes large sometimes very large effects on the game or the campaign as a whole to see what those are tonight you can enter exclamation mark unlocks in the chat but if you cannot tip or you simply don't want to that is also fine as well we are very very happy to have you here we're glad to have as many mysterious strangers in the chat as we can the more the merrier especially with such fine folks as yourselves so if you feel like spreading the word about the show you can use the hashtag wildcardsrpg on your favorite social media network or platform of choice and try and get more mysterious strangers to mosey on over also if you sub, resub, or gift a sub during tonight's show, you can give a curious ticket to either myself, the ringmaster, or to the players as a group. These function as limited rerolls and can go a long way towards ensuring survivability or upping the challenge if it's on my end. And uh, yeah, yeah, also, also, if we get 25 new folks to sub to the show to the channel not to the show to the channel tonight uh we will get a, a very special double draw Pew, pew. um an additional savage world's adventure deck card might find Ooh. its way out onto Ooh. the table causing all manner of uh amplified effects like we've seen uh all of the work of the past several episodes is all thanks to that one card dom played many fateful sessions ago uh so they do have a, a, a big effect sometimes it's true I would also, also like to thank uh, Hero Forge for uh, being a friend of the show. If you don't know about Hero Forge, it's a website 
slash company you can go to to design your very own uh, 3D miniature that they will then print and if you would like fully color for you and then send it to your home. I just got mine very recently. This Let's see. Oh boy, he is so keyed out. Oh, Jebediah. Oh, there, let's get him real close. Now you can't see him. Okay, now he's too far. All right. Now there's no details, but that's essentially, that's <laughs> that's uh, my camera's fault, not Hero Forge. I got a really cool Nightlinger one. I'm going to make a post and uh, share it on Twitter as well. But uh, I was very excited to get him in the mail. He looks super cool. Uh, and you guys should definitely check it out. You can enter exclamation mark Hero Forge in the chat uh, to get some more information about those fine folks. Send out some bennies. Bennies. Send out a few bennies. Uh, each of you folks are going to start with three bennies because you have nothing uh, involved with your characters that will up or down that count in any direction. So we have three bennies handing through the camera for uh, Celestina. Ah, uh, we got magic. <laughs> three bennies coming for Midas. Oh, no real time to see how successful it was as we just keep moving forward. Oh, there we go, Victor. Victor, three for you. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Buzz, there's three for you, Buzz. You got three coming that way for you. Uh, oh, nice catch. I almost dropped him there for a second. Mm -hmm. I also, as per usual, get one for each of you. So that's one, two, three, four for me to start things up tonight. Um, let's, let's, let's look over here. Um, oh, my. Oh my folks, it appears that we have a few toasts. <gasps> Everyone, grab your libations, your glass and drink of choice and lift them as Owen Lean would like us to toast. The spirit of the Western uh, was always unshakable belief that the good of the community triumphs over an individual's greed. Whether painting your wagon, shooting Liberty Valence, 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 Valence. or just mm. counting every vote. That sunset is waiting for you. Yeehaw! <laughs> Set him up Yeehaw. and Yeehaw. knock him down. Thank you very much, Owen Lane. Delightful message about wagon painting. Artemis2814 would like us to toast. Toast to girls' night. Nothing better to cap off Friday night than with a little wild cards. I'll drink to that. Set him up and knock him down. Thank you very much, Artemis2814. R.D. Armand would like us to toast. For a few magical hours, Pennsylvania is just someplace back east. Thank you, wild cards. <laughs> You're welcome. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you, R.D. Armand. ETU Sirket would like us to toast. Prepping for a marathon writing session tomorrow, and wild cards is perfect to set the mood. <laughs> set them up. And knock them down. Uh, if we're perfect to set Horses. the mood, uh, that sounds like some interesting writing that you're doing, ETU you, sir. Mm -hmm. oh, writing with a pen. Oh, I Evil it. Dice Monkey would like us to toast. <clears throat> Here, there, everywhere. All of Megan's Savage Games. Penultimate week. Set them up and <laughs> knock them down. Thank you very oh, much yeah. for that haiku, Evil Dice Monkey. <laughs> Civil Savage 880 would like us to toast. Clawing my way out of the ground and back to life, TGIF. Go wild cards. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Civil Savage 880. Neva and Omar would like us to toast. At last, the band is reunited. Mellow Wolf lives. <laughs> Tell no one. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Neva and Omar. Uh, we find out that the reason Mellow Wolf doesn't want anyone to tell us because they still exist, like, this far back in time. <laughs> they have always been immortal. They Josh just can't let Holloway it... would like us to toast. Please, oh. you've got to get me out of here. It's so cramped <laughs> and dark. <laughs> Set him up um, and knock him down. Mm. You're never getting out, Josh. I need you. Vampire 54 would like us to toast. The brand new Smith and Robard Savage Worlds, not responsible for malfunctions leading to trips through the hunting grounds, bleeding, death, life, and of course, unmaking. Set them up and knock them down. Yeah, we've come a long way from the original uh, Smith and Robards 1884 edition of Savage Worlds. <laughs> BSB Care One would like us to toast to tragic backstories and being hashtag the most fucked up of us thus far. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you, BSB Care One. And Obocop would like us to toast. No rhyme tonight. I've used them up on the gifts. So instead, just sending some love to the best chat in all of Twitch. Stay mm. safe, stay sane, and stay cool. Yeah. <laughs> Set them up. 
and knock him down. Thank you very much, Oboe Cop. No worries. Uh, we will not hold the lack of rhyme against you. Uh, I would say that y your gifts more than make up for that. <laughs> we also have uh, several curious tickets to dole out to you all. Oh, you must have done really, really well at Skee Ball, everyone. Adventures of Tony from last week. Uh, the one that I did not get to because it came later than I saw. Would like to give one curious ticket to the players. That's <gasps> us. So too would Yanto7 like to give a curious ticket to the players. However, hey. Eru the One would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you, Eru the One. But Firewolf411 would like to give one to the players. However, Evil Dice Monkey and J Matthews85 and Sammy David 95 would each like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. <gasps> However, feeling guilty, Simmy David 95 would also like to give a curious ticket to the players. Hope everyone's fine with me taking liberty about your emotional state as you are giving <laughs> these, uh, these curious tickets away. No, Vampire 54, no. feeling exceptionally turbulent this evening, would like to give four <laughs> curious tickets to the players. <gasps> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jack of Diamonds V10, Sam Burke, Megan Caves, Salabac, no Children 64, uh, my favorite N64 game. Each of these people <laughs> would like to give a curious ticket to the players. <gasps> Yay! But have That's you played the original No Child, No Children? That's pretty. Uh, the graphics and gameplay were like so primitive. I yeah, couldn't really get into no it. No Children 64 wouldn't have happened without it. So. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, all right. Really well, I'm, I'm glad it did, so that no one else has to <laughs> suffer through that. Let's keep moving. Um, Ozark Howler, BSB Care, Double GXG. And Nico Piros1234 would each like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Huh. Thank you very much for that. Wolfborg05 would like to give one to the players. And then <gasps> It's a Me Bondo would like to give two to the players. <gasps> and finishing off the list as of yet, Cross X Bones would like to give one curious ticket to the players. Yay! Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Cross Bones. Cross X Bones. Oh, oh welcome. We have also unlocked our first tier of the evening. The Mysterious Strangers in chat have been to a Renaissance festival and or small scale carnival. And they know that after a performer's show, they pass the hat because folks, they work on tips. And each one of the Mysterious Strangers has see fit to pool their pocket change and give you each an additional Benny. Ooh. Yay! Your entertainers, yeah, there they come, falling from the sky. I see you all caught them Whoa. already. Good, good. <laughs> I will add them to your stacks on my end. And oh, what's this? There's one remaining. Well, that one must be for me. So thank you very much, mysterious strangers. You're not an entertainer, though. Can, You're just- Ouch, you. damn, man. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. How dare you? I meant can in we, the carnival. Can we can change we the, the name of the of the show to Nightlinger's Traveling Renaissance Pleasure Fair of the Extraordinary? <laughs> um, we well, that's all going to that. depend Pleasure on uh, how tonight's game goes. Oh. Oh! That was already a decision point that you'll be making at around the uh, two and a half hour mark. So... Um, <laughs> anyways, that having been said, last week, uh, was October 30th. That was our episode. It was our very spooky special Halloween episode and the Mysterious Strangers in Chat unlocked Trick or Treat. However, the unlock came just a touch too late to really be impactful or fun for the last episode. So guess what? Halloween got all sticky this year and continues to get its icky sticky candy tendrils into November the 6th as well. So let's go trick or treating, everybody. Will all of you um, ready your candy baskets, and um, who who will knock on my door first? Oh my goodness! I'll do it. Wait, I mean, if we're if we're gonna go trick or treating, trick or treat. You're right. Mask up. Be safe. Uh, you gotta knock on the door. I did. Trick or treat. Hello, little boy. Oh, hello. <laughs> Would you like uh, some candy? I did say trick or treat. So legally, you do have to give me candy. Uh. Will you please roll a d6 for me? Okay. And don't roll a one or a two. Okay. Mm. I rolled a three. A three? Oh, well, That's I think I have just the thing for you, young man. It's 
a fun size Snickers. Oh, fun size! Yes. Um, you have gained a uh, a fun size Snickers. You can eat that at any point during tonight's show to give a plus two to any one of your rolls. Plus two to my rolls. Okay, gotcha. Mm. I'll write that down. Thank All you. right, who who will go next? I'll uh, go. Very well, Unabomber. <laughs> this is my costume now. Jesus. Bop, bop, bop. Trick or treat. Hello, little boy. I'm the same man from before. Would you like some candy? I mean, he didn't meet me, so. Yes, I would. Well, then roll a d6 for me. All right. Got to find one. <laughs> it's hard to see in a pretty dark room. And so well, on. that's the costume you chose. I got a one. A one. Oh yes, I have just the thing for you in here. It's a Necco wafer. No! I have gained um, a little roll of Necco wafers because Lord knows you don't want them. I can add a minus two penalty to any one of your rolls this evening. And that's all of you. I'm making eye contact with all of you right now. You can't see. I'm frowning, uh, so but you can't tell. Uh, who is next? Is I'll it go. Wolverine? I have a rules question real quick. Yes. Is this before we roll or after we roll? Uh, it can be at any point. You can do it before, you can do it after. You can do it after? Okay, cool, great. No, 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 you can do it before. Otherwise okay. it'll be unfair for me yes. to add a minus two to it. Yeah, you're yes. right, yeah, okay. uh, just, just before. <laughs> cool. All right. This is if Midas uh, was a surgeon. Uh, oh, who's next, who's next? Wolf I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Knock, Hi, knock. sorry, oh. the other guy's in the can. Um, would you <laughs> like some um, candy? Uh, yeah. Young, hairy Canadian? <laughs> yes. A All right, roll bub. the D6. <laughs> Something is I got a rock. three. You got a rock. No, you didn't. Uh, you got, oh, what is this? A three? Oh, well, that means a Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, yes. Yeah. Reese's peanut butter cup, you get to add a plus two to any one of your rolls this evening. Wow. All right. Who's who's last? Me. All right, <laughs> do it. Drink a treat. Knock on the door. <laughs> Hello, Hello, little banana. boy. She already has candy. Nature's candy. Um, roll a d6 for me while you eat your banana. Listen, it fell off my hat and broke, so I had to eat it. I got a six. Do I do I keep rolling? A six? No, a six means you get an ancient, dusty roll of chewy spree. Oh. Uh, you still get to add a plus two to any one of your rolls uh, that you make chewy tonight. Spree. It's basically one or two is the bad thing, and then everything Man, else is chewy good. Chewy spree, that stuff is great. Trick or treat, mm. we did it, we did yes, it. We now did pretend it. that that was last week when it was relevant. Um, and now, before we go any further, now feels like as good a time as any to let you all know that Wild Cards is rated R slash TVMA slash uh, Canada, oh boy, crazy time for uh, violence, <laughs> language, and dark and disturbing horror content. Basically, if you have seen it in a horror movie, at any point, there is a chance it could show up on wild cards, except probably not so much with the hostile, not super into torture porn. But we make every effort to keep things classy as we can here on wild cards. However, this is the weird west and these are savage worlds and your safety is not guaranteed. But we hope that won't keep you from joining us as we travel down these dusty trails. And on that note, one and all, friends, I think it is time to saddle up. When last we saw the Wild Cards crew, they had come back to the real world. In fact, to a town called Iron Spring, where they heard the carnival was uh, just, just right outside the, the town limits. They had come back just where they wanted to be, but not how they wanted to be. The pumpkin headed figure that had shoved them off the staircase had brought them back in the spirit realm as <clears throat> ghosts. However, they were not the only ghosts in Iron Spring. They met a young 13 year old named Theo who seemed uh, a bit strange and had been a ghost for quite a while, but helped show them the ropes enough that they were able to make contact with random members of the carnival that were doing their business in town and reach out to Mama Lou, who was able to inform them that the answer they sought lay in the cemetery, the source of the strange 
pulsing feeling that they had all been feeling pulling them towards that direction of town since they had arrived. When they got to the cemetery, they found that the source of the darkness that scared Theo so was an undead gang, the Capshaw gang, who beset the crew, attempting to protect some other powerful thing that had fallen from the sky. However, in the midst of this melee, it became known that Theo had forgotten. They were actually, at one point, the town marshal. And having this memory brought back up in their mind allowed them to assume their true form and power <clears throat> and handily dispatch the Capshaw gang, leaving the crew behind as they walked into the light, but also allowing a small chunk of the Lady of the Grey's staircase to rise up from the earth, calling out to our crew, and also calling out to a nearby grave where a screaming skeletal figure pulled itself up out of the ground and clawed its way over towards the staircase chunk, touching it and revealing themselves to be Victor Parrish, thought missing, now found. And as the crew finds solid ground beneath their feet once more, we pick up in the Iron Spring graveyard at night. You have all just touched this bit of stair and suddenly things feel different. You can feel the ground beneath your feet. You can feel the wind rustling through your hair and you can see, hear and experience the sounds of the vibrant night around you as the fog so dense that had built itself up in the Iron Spring graveyard begins to disperse and slowly drift away in the night. Victor, why are you, why are you in ground and, and, and skeleton and this is, are you okay? Perhaps I can answer that question for you, Victor. Not the are you okay, but the why were you in the ground? It appears that wherever it was that pumpkin headed figure sent you off to was a much less pleasant place. You awoke. Less in darkness, unable to move, oh. unable to do anything at all, except slowly realize that you were trapped inside the corpse of someone buried in a graveyard. And while everyone else spent time flitting through town and coming to terms with their ghosthood, you stayed there in the quiet and the darkness until time lost meaning and you began to despair of ever seeing the light of day until something so powerful called out to you that you felt the ability to move surging through this skeletal body and you dug and clawed your way up out of the coffin, out of the earth and over towards this shining siren and touching it, found yourself back to yourself. Real buffy moment there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good to see you again, Victor. I was dead. Oh, you were dead? Well, I suppose we all kind of were, depending on what you think dead is. I mean, just to I be sh sure, are, are, are we entirely sure that we're back to uh, uh, normal right now? Well, I mean, what is normal? It, how will we ever know, really? I mean, these could well, if be you can a completely walk different through... reality. If you can walk through walls and maybe fly, I'd say that then maybe reality is, you know, we're still kind of trapped, but uh, I- It crashes over all of you like a wave then, a sudden surge of fatigue and exhaustion as though every bit of energy in your body is slowly being leached out from you. I don't feel good. Like yeah. Dying again. Cool. Uh, Maybe uh, this is just our, our, our bodies reassessing the world after who knows how long it's been since we've had any sort of real sustenance or, 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 or anything like that. Yeah. Let's. Um, that let's how work? it works? Let's make our way to, uh, to camp if we can and try to hook up with someone over there. They might. Nightling or someone might know uh, what's been happening wasn't, here. 
Now, wasn't Mama Lou supposed to meet us here at midnight? That's yes. what I remember, yeah. I wonder what happened to her. Well, I, I thought maybe we just missed her and uh, and they were here. It's a thought. Almost as though summoned by uh, your words, the fog <clears throat> continues to drift and spread outwards from the wind rustling through the trees of the graveyard. And you see little spots of light around the graveyard out in the darkness, obscured before by the fog and your focus on the dread task at hand, you see what look like figures arranged in a large circle around the outskirts of the graveyard, each holding a candle or a lantern or a light of some kind. And as the fog clears and you see them, so too do they see you. And a huge, exultant, celebratory cry goes up from the assembled mass of Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary. As they break out in wild applause and whooping hollers, everyone rushing inwards, leaping over the cemetery gate or through the entryway, trying to get to you, to welcome you back, to welcome you home. You see Mama Lou's smiling face from the back of the throngs of people, mm -hmm. looking a bit pinched and drawn, but serene and happy. And um, just as things begin to reach their celebratory crescendo, you feel the last vestiges of energy flood out of your body. And each of you, almost simultaneously, succumb to darkness. Oh. Good. Uh, like, we're unconsciousness darkness, or we all just turn evil? Um, <laughs> you all have now turned evil. No, you <laughs> fall unconscious. Turned evil, uh, sure, sure. <laughs> turns out that uh, it's pretty exhausting for your body to travel from corporeal to uh, non-corporeal, or vice versa. You all wake up as the harsh light of day streams dimly in through the window of a wagon. All manner of strange scents and overpowering odors assail your senses as you fight back to consciousness and sting your eyes a bit. And that indicates to all of you that you must be in Mama Lou's apothecary wagon. That's where she keeps all the super potent stuff. Oh, it is a strong smell, and I live in a wagon, wagon with lots of ravens, so, oh. Yeah. Uh, is Mama Lou here? Um, no. Mama Lou is not here, actually. Uh, looking around, the wagon is, uh, is dark and uh, appears closed up. The only bit of light is filtering in through gaps in the, in the curtains of the window on the side. You all are on uh, the floor of the wagon, uh, which has been piled up with various different pillows and, and cushions or uh, straw sacks even, uh, seeming like whatever uh, could be found on short notice to give you all sort of a, a solid platform and a place uh, to be unconscious. While we're here, quick, quick pause, because it looks like the mysterious strangers in chat have unlocked the next two rewards, uh, reward tiers for us. So first up, the draw. mysterious strangers have unlocked a draw. That's very uh -oh. good. That's uh -oh. very good. You have to wait until he's almost going to say it. <laughs> She's wow. right. You do have to wait until I'm almost oh. going to say it, just like in a gunfight. If you shoot someone <laughs> before they call it, you can't be like, I did it, I'm fast. Works for me. Um, I think I got also, it. <laughs> in this particular instance, I won that gunfight. <laughs> Megan's dead. You go to jail, though. The only way to win a gunfight is to hunt down the person you're eventually going to get in a fight with and murder them with a gun before they have a chance to get into things with you. Uh, yep. It worked for Celestina, though. Following the rules definitely paid out because, Celestina, <gasps> you will be drawing. Yay! A card from tonight's draw deck, The Savage Worlds. I did it. Adventure deck, will you let me know when to stop shuffling? Or riffling, I guess. I'm not shuffling. If I was shuffling. Stop. 
Ace, play instead of rolling to automatically succeed at a trait roll with a single raise. Oh boy, nice. oh boy. Nice. It yeah. says Ace though, you all saw it. Um, <laughs> so at any point like tonight, it. instead of rolling, you can succeed with the raise on a trait wow. roll. And as we learned from the last time I messed that up, uh, it is not, it does not, not count as an eight. If it's an opposed roll, it counts as a success with a raise over whatever they rolled. Uh, it's a very great card. Thank you very much, Mysterious Strangers. They have also unlocked the next reward tier, which is called Premature Mystery Elation. Yeah. Sorry, what? Premature Mis Mystery what? Elation. I, I said that weird. Oh, uh, which means we are digging into our old friend <laughs> here a little earlier than usual. The mystery box has come out to play oh. due to a sudden onset case of premature mystery elation. Um, let us see. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. How can oh. it be? This mystery box evil. card, I'll tell you for free. This uh -oh. is a new one. Uh oh. This is a chat submitted one. Uh oh. And this one will not come into effect until it does. Oh. Until it does. Hashtag until it does. Good. So thank you very much, mysterious strangers in chat. Now, boop, 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 back to Mama Lou's wagon and the four of you waking up in a senses assailing kind of way. Do, do we, are there like bottles of medicine that we can see that have been opened and used on us? Like, are there any sort of like, I don't know, bandages or anything to say that we've been treated by somebody? Um, there is all sorts of stuff in this wagon. Um, the, the walls of it are just filled with uh, shelves and cabinets stuffed full of all manner of apothecary uh, tidbits that Mama Lou has picked up and uses in her healing. Um, you all uh, have, you, you feel fine. Um, your, your bodies seem fine. Uh, you don't have like wrappings or bandages or anything like that on you, but you, you feel physically all there and uh, and relatively healthy. So um, I, I have a, a I have a question. Out of character question? Yeah. I guess I guess I say it because my character would know it, but I don't. Do we have any more memory of like the time between leaving on the jaunt and showing up on the train? No. So that's still kind of a blank. It is, yes. Wait, we don't remember anything that happened in the hunting grounds? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. Yep. Um, between leaving on the jaunt and then waking up on that strange train mm -hmm. in the hunting grounds that started this whole uh, situation for you, you all still have no memory of what happened in between those times. Ah. Well, um, I suppose we should go find a breakfast or dinner. Yeah. No, breakfast, maybe both. Let's do both. I think we earned both. I like this idea. You, we, you we have so many. Oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. We have so many questions we have to get answered, though. I, I mean, how yes. long were we even gone? Right, we do this with breakfast. I assume other people there are uh, two for one. Actually, Victor, you were looking around to see if there was any signs that you had been uh, dressed or attended to uh, in any way. You also see in the middle of all of you what looks like a uh, simple piece of parchment covered with the very neat and precise script of Mama Lou. Um, picking it up to look at it, it seems that Mama Lou has taken the liberty of uh, leaving you a note on the off chance that you all awaken. And in her very frustrating oh, and infuriating and, and, and slightly uh, impressive, I won't say slightly impressive, definitely impressive way, she has uh, listed out some answers to the questions that you probably have in the order that they popped into your heads uh, as, as she has listed them out. Uh -huh. The very first notation is three days. The second one is because you passed out. Uh, the third one is, yeah, that whole time, uh, and on and on like that. Um, essentially, what you find out is that you all are, uh, in setup day at the carnival. The carnival is, uh, at a new location in Montana called Bull Plain. Uh, and it also appears at least according to her note at the end of the letter, that Nightlinger is looking for the four of you. I think breakfast may have to wait. If 
Nightlinger is looking for us. Maybe we can grab something on the way. We've eaten, I am surprisingly unhungry. You know what I say? I say hell with them. We earned breakfast at least. We can see him after breakfast. Well, I'm sure that Nightlinger will have something to give us as well for breakfast. He's a thoughtful type, you know. You think he's going to feed us? He always has snacks. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> Wait. A Benny to see if Nightlinger always has snacks. Um, yeah, just like um, Midas has Christopher treats and Celestina has Vika treats, uh, Nightlinger has employee treats uh, that he uh, gives out to each of you when you've done a great job. Uh, I was you thinking, Mr. Nightlinger, those... you'd give me a raise, but nope. here. Celestina, oh. you talking about those peanuts he hands out to us? I'm pretty sure he he's is. doing that as a joke. He is. Peanuts, yeah, you but know, you he pay also... us in peanuts. That's what you he says. You pay a monkey in peanuts. He, you don't he pay literally people pays in peanuts. people in peanuts. It's not a snack. Hey, Why that we... doesn't seem like Nightlinger. He pay people like normal money in here in this country. I'm Already? getting breakfast. Y'all can do whatever the hell you want, but I'm getting my breakfast. <sighs> I well, mean... What? Now that you're all awake, it does seem you do feel pretty hungry. And according to this note, you've been out for three days. Uh, so that that does make sense. Yes, I think if Nightlinger just left notes, he was just waiting for when we wake up anyway. Which means that he's not in a hurry, right? So we can get breakfast. Yes. He understands. In uh. the and maybe there'll be peanuts. <laughs> Well, I feel like whatever we do, we should do it pretty quickly. If, if we've been gone any significant time, then I imagine uh, Eustace will have uh, just got a whole list of things that he needs me to do. Huh. Uh, all right. Well, let's run by the mess wagon, I suppose, and see what cookies cooked up. Okay. So um, you all... Uh hear the sounds outside affirming that this is a setup day, meaning the carnival has arrived at this location and is in the process of putting up the tents and the attractions and all of that in preparation for opening tonight. So uh, not only have you been out for three days and gone for who knows long, how long before that, uh, but it appears that there is a show tonight. And as you open the door to the wagon and the daylight streams in brightly, from outside, your eyes adjust and take in the sight of the tents and wagons and all the bric-a-brac and miscellanea of Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary laid out in a grassy looking field, tents set up, all manner of things being constructed and built, activity and busyness abound. And as you stand there blinking against the light, a, uh, a lanky teenager comes running past, uh, dressed in a uh, a dingy white uh, sort of sort of robe and and looking really harried. And as he runs past you, he he looks up in in amazement. Oh, oh, it's it's you four. Oh, oh, good. I'm glad you're awake. Uh, everyone's gonna be gonna be so glad to see you. Um, listen, uh, you all haven't seen any any sort of Weird animal come by here, right? This is Zeke Oswald, Raphael Leduc's uh, harried assistant, uh, the the uh, the sous chef of the entire carnival, essentially. Uh, uh, no, I... no, uh, uh, Zeke. I have not seen a strange animal come near here. What a weird animal are you chasing after? Because if you chase after it, it means that it maybe was on the menu. Oh, well, it is. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, I, I don't know what animal it is. Um, Mr. Leduc, he's, he's in one of his moods today, and he told me that, uh, that the entree had escaped and that it was my job to, uh, to collect it uh, alive, and uh, he was going to go enjoy his pipe. And uh, when he... Oh. Enjoys his pipe. He likes to be alone, and I, I can't bother him. So I Listen. don't know exactly what it is I'm looking for, but I assume it'll Listen. be delicious. Listen, just stop talking for one moment. I see you should uh, continue to look, but I don't worry if you never find anything. Maybe, just you know, maybe. Oh. 
that's easy for you to say, Miss Celestina. You're not going to get screamed at by a Frenchman what's uh, disappointed in your work ethic. Okay, then maybe find local chicken and bring that back. Because I suspect there's no actual animal that ran off. No offense. But what makes I you think... say that? Oh, it's just a feeling. Uh, so out of character, Celestina, um, are you just messing with Zeke? No, it literally or is this sounds something that to me, you feel like Raphael does to him a lot. Yeah, that's. Uh, it sounds like Raphael, if he is the diva that it seems that he is, uh, said, "Go get this animal that escaped. That's weird and crazy just to get out of his hair." Well, you no. Know, normally, I, 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 I ain't one to turn down a, a snipe hunt when Mr. Leduc just needs some time to to smoke his pipe. But thing is, I, I heard something in in uh, in in the the mess wagon uh, thrashing about and making all kinds of uh, of noise and and hubbub last night. So I I think that there there might actually be something this time. There were some strange tracks outside of it too. So I think something did get out. Uh, okay. I mean, well, uh, good, good luck Duke is known for getting rather uh, creative with his menus, so. Uh, yeah, you're telling me I'm the one that has to cook them. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, just keep your eyes out, and if you, if you see anything like that, just give a shout, and I'll come running. Hey, uh, is there anything uh, ready to eat over there right now oh. that we can just pick up? Oh, right. Are you, are you all just waking up right now? Like, yeah, yes. yeah, we First just, time. Uh, mm-hmm. I just thought, well, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was just for the morning. Well, well, welcome back to the, uh, well, welcome back. I, I'm sorry, I have to go, baby. Yeah, uh, breakfast is almost done. You better hurry over to the mess tent if you want anything at all. All right. All right, Let's remember, go. give a shout. Yeah, we won't. And, and Zeke just stresses out and starts wandering out through the carnival, uh, making strange animal calls as he goes. Eh. Well, let's get food. Sure. And Celestina heads over to the uh, tent. Okay. Um, is everyone heading to the mess tent? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Your stomachs are growling, so you might as well attend to uh, that need first. You all make your way around the outskirt of the camp, uh, past all of the area that they are setting up for uh, everyone to come and visit the carnival and out past that to where all of the personal uh, tents and wagons are built up for employees only. And the mess tent is indeed up and running and you can hear from inside and just the activity you see outside. There are not many people in there right now. You see what looks like maybe some stragglers of the uh, of the hands uh, that help out around the carnival, just eating a very lackadaisical meal as they avoid getting back to work. All right, looks good for first pickings. Let's dive in. Yes. Head up there and grab a meal. All right. Too. So you head up to uh, what looks like a self-service meal. Uh, Leduc must be very serious about that pipe. Uh, he he just <laughs> left it to be uh, on the honor system. But you see what looks like a, a, a nice uh, little bit of a thick porridge and uh, even a, a few pieces of bacon that you can uh, spread around. And looking out through the tent, uh, you see... There's plenty of open tables. Uh, no one wants to sit with the hands because those guys are rough and mean to everyone who isn't an, a, another hand. Um, but I mean, hey, maybe you're feeling lucky today or maybe you want to sit somewhere else. I don't know your life. <laughs> now everyone, um, please chew a little bit quieter. Just a little bit. We're over here. I wasn't talking to you clearly since you, you are everyone. over there. Uh, yes, I did, but you're not a part of these, everyone. Oh, all right, my mistake. I guess I didn't understand that because I'm not a performer. <laughs> yes, I guess you didn't. You're too stupid then. Uh, oh, I, I have a question. Yes. Is my relationship with the hands any different than the other three? Tell me why it might be. I feel like it might be because I'm more on that side of the carnival than the other three. I'm not a performer myself. I do more like set up and tear down and maintaining of everything. You definitely do. And also uh, Buzz has a fair amount of of work in that arena as well, although he is a performer. Uh, You are not a performer, um, Midas, but you might as well be as far as these guys are concerned. Uh, it's not like Eustace is over here eating with them. You guys are a kind of like a, a different subsystem in the carnival. Um, I would imagine these guys 
say a lot of things to you that give you the impression that they're laughing at a private joke that you are not cued in on. I want to clarify that Celestina was just being mean to people. I didn't think of it as a performer to hand type thing, but I'm just choosing to have them interpret it that way. (laughs) Okay, but Celestina's just mean sometimes. They got a real chip on their shoulder. Well, don't have to be mean too. I I feel like Midas every now and then like goes over and tries to like be chummy with them and it never quite works, but he's just like, ha ha ha. I, I, oh, I, yeah, I feel, I feel like, uh, well, uh, mm, Celestina, Steve, right? Yeah, uh, that's me. I'm Steven. <laughs> you know, hey, let's, we're just trying to eat and kind of get our strength back. There's no need for chewing volumes to, to change between the two groups here. I think, I think we're all, we're all okay. Right. I was talking about this group. You three, true quiet. Well, I am true we quietly. Well, I can hear it, and that's problem. Well, then stay away from me, rip, damn! It Buzz. makes me want to rip your face off. <laughs> Buzz, Buzz, give me a persuasion uh, roll. But before you do, um, let's see. Uh, Celestina mm-hmm. and Victor are not really selling this for you. So I'm not going to let them support. But Midas, if you would like to support uh, Buster on this persuasion roll, you can give it a try. Although you are at a minus two because these guys don't take you seriously. So a minus three because I have a minus one on persuade rolls. Correct. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to (laughs) help. All right. So you just kind of you just kind of give like a little weak wave from over the side. Like, hey, hey. And no one pays much mind to you at all. Uh, Buster. Give me a persuasion roll. I aced it on the eight. Ooh. I aced it again. Ooh. Uh, let's see. That's uh, nine. Uh, yeah, nineteen. That's why they call you Buzz. All right. Uh, this is opposed, so I'm gonna roll against it. Uh, that's a one. Um, I will spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. That is a two. So thank you, curious ticket, for working your magic. Um, <laughs> that is a success with several raises, Buzz. So you stand up to kind of get in between uh, your group and the hands, just wanting to cut this off right at the ankles before it goes anywhere today. However, you see a fair few uh, number of faces over at that table uh, where the, the rowdier group of, of uh, carnival hands is hanging out that you don't recognize. Um, And you worry that things might turn a little darker because you see some very unpleasant looks being shot in Celestina's direction. However, Steve, or Steven, Uh uh, hears you and kind of just puts a hand out to everyone else and says, hey, apparently they've been through a lot. So we'll cut them some slack. Sorry, Buzz. Yeah, hey. You all, uh, you know, enjoy your breakfast. we didn't mean to cause any issues. Uh, no, much much obliged. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly, and uh, enjoy your food. Uh, yes, we we we, we 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 can catch up sometime later. We could do that. Okay. Midas goes and sits at another table. Do do uh huh? Any of you all recognize any of those people over there? Oh, no. Nah. Where do you think we picked them up? How long do you think we were in hunting grounds? Three days. You think in the hunting grounds, I thought we were out for three days. Yeah, you were passed out for three days. We were passed oh. out for three days. In the hunting um, grounds, eight years. See, well, this is what I'm worried about. Well, what if we've all been replaced? Well, that's that's, <clears throat> that's exactly, exactly what I was asking earlier. We, 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 we really don't, don't have a good... Except for the fact that it was the second night of one of their their uh, uh, per- per performances. We, we, we don't know much about what happened while we were gone. What year is it? Uh, well, I can see that even though you all have uh, been out of the game for a bit, you're right up to your old tricks again. You hear the very familiar and steady voice of, uh, of Leonard, uh, one of Nightlinger's uh, right-hand men, the leader of the uh, technical side, uh, by which I mean the setup and striking side of, uh, of the carnival. 
a very tall, barrel-chested black man uh, with a uh, lovely, lovely twirled mustache comes over and sits down next to you, uh, a bowl of porridge as he sits at your table. Welcome back, you four. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this is very kind of you, Leonard. Thanks, Lord. Oh, miss you. Anything you big? Too. <laughs> what did you miss? You're asking me. What did what did we miss? I mean, you just. I, I've heard the story. I, I I saw what happened at the graveyard, but I, I must admit I, I still have a hard time believing that the four of you are even here. Ew. Yes. Us as well. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah, hunting well, ground is a strange place. <laughs> we'll Tell me, what, I, 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 we're all dying to know, and, and seeing as I'm here now, what happened? Well, first, well, did I know about Eurytus? How long have you gone? How long were you gone? Oh, well, well I suppose you must be confused. Uh, it's been over a month. Okay, so not as long as eight years. <laughs> uh, no, but but uh, still uh, much longer than it seemed for us. I mean, everyone everyone agrees, correct? It, it, it felt like a couple days. It felt like we were yeah. on that boat for a long time, though. You know? A boat? Yes, it is a boat that came over to America on. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Celestina uh, summoned a, a steam liner uh, after a small dog taught us that we could summon things. With glowing eyes. You know, you know, I, I asked, I did ask right. what happened, but I, I, I think that uh, perhaps it is uh, beyond my ken. That isn't even the weirdest part, but okay. You can't, uh, I, uh, you can't imagine how, how, Utterly bewildering it is to see the four of you here. We we thought you were gone. I mean, when when we first got in to that place and, and that thing came swooping down out of the sky and swallowed you four up, we, we thought for sure that was it. But then Eustace was able to blow a hole in it with one of his doodad contraptions. And, and then it seemed like we might have a chance, but... Well, then you uh, fell. Uh, uh, actually, if, if, if you don't mind elaborating a little bit, what thing came and and scooped us up? Because as far as uh, through our experience, we woke up on a uh, rather uh, lavishly appointed uh, train and, uh, well, we were on a train, basically. Uh, that wasn't no train I've ever seen. It looked like a giant flying maggot. Yes, I do remember it looking uh, not like strain on the outside, but the inside, it was a fairly nice train with very strange people on it. First class maggot, I'll say. And then it mm. tried to offer us things that, that it, it, it believed we very much wanted. It, yeah, it gave me a, a flesh and blood version of Christopher and, and a, a, a duke for... Uh, Celestina. That is interesting. That that is that is interesting. You you all can see that Leonard is a little bit distracted, um, and following his gaze, you can see he's watching the group of hands finishing up their meal and and filing out of the tent uh, as as they leave the five of you alone in the mess tent. Yeah, no, no, that's not uh, something you hear every day. Uh, uh, Leonard, these Leonard. New fox. Yeah, you you know these uh, the new ones. Well, um, well, yeah, of course I do. I, I hired them. We, uh, you, uh, you four weren't the only ones we lost. Oh. In there. In between the, the running and the trying to get you out of that thing. A uh, couple, uh, I guess more than a couple, a good handful of my, uh, of my workers were lost. Oh. So, when we emerged here in Montana territory, I uh, was able to hire on a, a few temporary hands just to help us uh, bridge the gap, as it were. I see. Well, e so, 
Uh, so, uh, are, are, are we to... They're, they're, they're not contracted to the carnival. Of course not. They're just, they're just temporaries, like we do sometimes when we're getting low on hands. They'll stay with us while we're in this area and probably wander off once they've made enough money to drink themselves to death with, but... I Is don't that know. how it usually goes? It can go that way. Okay. You don't seem super excited about this group. If I miss it. Which well, I do. So I do. It's just that with uh, folks being a bit jumpy of late, uh, I've been getting reports that people have seen uh, someone lurking about outside of their wagons at night peering in, folks finding things moved from place to place, not where they left them. And uh, closed community as we are, it ain't exactly difficult to figure out what might be the source of these difficulties. Well, uh, uh, Leonard, you, you, you know that I've, I've offered before, and, and it remains on the table, that, that, that if you do ever feel that, 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 that human help is, is not uh, a meeting up to your standards, I, I could always look into building uh, a, a, a larger version of a Christopher-style automaton. And uh, Christo or Christopher comes just sort of like like sidling out from from behind you, uh, seated at the table, and does a little like kickstand, um, like ta-da, jazz hands thing. I'm Christopher. Nobody wants a big one of that. Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, theoretically, I, I could create uh, more. Uh, maybe I could call them Chris's, perhaps. No, and no, no. Victor is right. No one wants a big one of that. No. Yes. Uh, uh, out of I don't character. know if it's fair to say no one. <laughs> yes, out of character. Out of character. What is the terrain that we're in? Is it like wooded? Is it plains? Is it plainsy with plainsy. mountains in the distance? So there's there's not a lot of locations that if someone were say following us that they could easily hide and keep up with us. Uh, I mean, not that you can see here, um, but you're you're off away from the road at this point. You all have just pulled oh, out okay. into a, into a field to set up the carnival. Listen. Um, while, uh, the four of you are, are getting your bearings today, you've, uh, you got fresh eyes on this situation. You, you don't know these folks, so m maybe keep an eye out, and, uh, if you see anything unusual, you, uh, report it back to me, yeah? Sure. Yeah, you got it. All right. All right. Well, uh... There's a lot to do. It's setup day, as you know, so I should probably put this aside and get back to work, but I, I just... Uh, 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 Leonard, I, actually, I, I, I forgot to tell you, uh, I, I, I did something, uh, because I, I know there, there may have in the past been some tension uh, uh, between us, and, I, and he pulls out his, his Mr. Twister, that is like his new invention he'd been working on. Uh, I just wanted to show you that I, I made this one uh, in, in your likeness. And you see that the the face of the Mr. Twister is sort of a caricature of Leonard that has been carved into a little cowboy that's like riding it, a bucking bronco. Does it have a very fancy mustache? Yes, it's like a big carved mustache that's like even bigger than his on the face. Leonard kind of like leans his face in a little closer to it and looks it up and down and then sniffs. You know how I feel about frivolity, Midas. Uh... Well, um... Well, back to work. Still? Right. Good to see you four. Um, Same. Home. Uh, Buster? Yeah. Can I have a word? Sure. So the three of you sit there as Buster joins uh, Leonard and walks just outside of the tent, and Leonard looks around and just makes sure there's no one within immediate earshot, Buster, and says, now, uh, listen... I'm telling you this because you got a sensible head on your shoulders and I know you won't fly off the handle about it, but I figure that if I keep it to myself, I'm doing you and everyone else a disservice. Okay. All right, now, when we got out of there, we all, well, not all of us, wasn't exactly unanimous, but by and large, the carnival voted to turn right back around and go in there and get you four. But, uh... Nightlinger overruled us. 
Okay. So I just, uh, well, I just thought I'd let you know where you stand. Right. Okay. That's all. I appreciate it, Leonard. He sticks his hand out to shake it. And Leonard envelops your hand in a very firm, yeah. oh. bearish grasp. Okay. I forgot how well you shake hands. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, Buster. Goddamn good to see you. Likewise. Very much so. And then he twirls the end of his mustache and walks off with purpose. What do you think they talk about? Maybe it's, uh, it's a little uh, helping. Uh, yeah, but I feel like Buster is charismatic enough to help hook people up. Yes, maybe it's this. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure he was telling that we got to lose Midas after that whole toy thing he did oh. for... I, yeah, that was it. Weird. Yeah, yeah sorry, Midas, it's... you gotta go. I, I'm I'm ninety percent sure that 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 wasn't what you were talking about. I'm but... fair. Oh, but how I, do you I, know? I, well, I'm just true. saying, if that was what you were talking about, then Eustace would be sure to to override it because he is, uh, he's very dependent on. Midas yeah, Eustace was something. the one who said it. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. Yeah, FAO Sports called. And, yeah. Uh, you Eustace know how it goes. Is, Eustace is working for them now. So was, Midas yeah. shoots a look at everybody, and you can tell that the joking just got not funny for him. All right, all right, Midas, listen to him, man. All jokes aside, if you ever make a toy out of me, I'm going to make a corpse out of you. Oh. I've definitely made, I mean, no. You know, Midas, you could do that other direction. You make a toy out of uh, Victor, and you stick pins in it, and you can make a corpse out hey, of him. no, no. <laughs> Can you do that? So don't tell uh, him how to do that. Are y'all uh, ready to go see Nightlinger? Well, hold oh, on. I, we got to talk about this toy business because I don't want well, nobody making toys. No, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't do something like that to you, Victor. But now that you mention the idea, and Midas kind of starts mumbling to himself and pulls out a little notebook and starts like making notes on the possibility of like a voodoo doll toy. <laughs> All right, you heard him. If he, ma he makes a toy, I get to shoot him for free, right? That's that's. What? I said it out loud, so it's legal. Carney so code, fair. I think. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, yeah. let's go see the boss. Yeah, two night linger. Okay. All right, so you guys uh, finish up your meal and feeling uh, full of sticky porridge and nice salty bacon, you make your way across the hubbub of the carnival and over towards Nightlinger's wagon. Um, as you go, can everyone give me a notice roll, please? Uh. You'll never guess what I rolled. I bet it's a five. A five. Got it. Oh, a crit fail for Midas. <gasps> oh, no, a crit a fail four for Celestina and a three for Victor. All right. So, um, Victor, you are just you're kind of lost in your own thoughts. Uh, that your experience in the town of Iron Spring was uh, very very disturbing uh and and regardless of how hard a man victor is and what other things he's been through in his life that is to to think that you have been condemned to spend eternity a prisoner in a body in the darkness uh is a pretty dark hand to be dealt so you're a bit distracted um midas midas as uh you all walk out of the tent and you pat your belly feeling full of porridge. Christopher walks up next to you and looks his unblinking eyes up at you and then looks down at his stomach and sort of mocks the, the motion of it. I'm Christopher and makes a loud clanging noise as he bangs his metallic hands against his metallic body, which just upsets Vika mightily on Celestina's shoulder. And Vika squawks and takes to the air and immediately flies directly into your face, no! where she starts clawing and flapping, trying to lift your lenses <laughs> off of your face and squawking at you as Christopher leaps up and down and tries to grab her and keep her from doing it. Uh, you are going Vika. to suffer. Uh, a minus one Be to careful. all sight-based notice rolls for uh, the rest of the game due to the blood running into your eyes. Uh, I, I, Vika, I, I, I am, careful. Meet yourself. I am so sorry, Vika. Um, but Celestina and Buster, you got a four and a five, which are successes. Um, Celestina, you hear uh, strange bits of, uh, of calliope music 
wafting over from uh, somewhere else in the carnival. Some weird kind of dramatic song that you've never heard before. And you hear some, some uh, what, what sounds like angry uh, shouting. Buster, um, you hear um, from over near uh, where the performer's like changing room tent is being set up. Uh, you hear the distinct sound of two voices, uh, the strong woman, Lucia Fuerte, and uh, the clown, David. And this is unusual to you because of everyone at the carnival, those two seem to often speak the least, uh, but they seem to be engaged in some sort of semi-loud conversation somewhere over there. Apart from all of that though, the carnival is in full setup swing, and as you make your way over towards Nightlinger's wagon, you can see the dark foreboding structure of it coming into view just on the outskirts of the business of the carnival. Did you all hear that beautiful music? It's very dark and upsetting. Yeah. Uh, yes. Something is in the air here. Like what? A pollen? Or do you mean like a strange feeling? I like your sense of humor, Celestina. Ah, thanks. I know. That's why you like me. It... can't get rid of me. Yeah. Uh, no. No, it's not the pollen. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm just, um, I feel like, uh, some, something has changed here and not just the turnover. I mean, um, every time we go into a hunting ground, it's we never quite come out the same as we went in. And this one seems to have been very big. Do you think that something could have followed the carnival out? It's almost like it kept the balance. It uh, ate us and spit something out instead. Right. It's just the thought. Yeah. Um... Well, Notlinger's got to be happy to see us. Since he's getting his property back. Oh, yes. Wait, property? What do you mean? Victor, you're not property. How many times do you have to tell you this? You, your own person, nobody on you. You know what I'm talking about. We're bound or whatever to him. Contracts oh, well. and such, so. Yes, but it's a friendly thing. He help us, we help him. I don't think it's friendly, Celestina. Well, it is for me then. I'm sorry, it's not for you. Really? Yes. How many friends you got contracts with? I don't, I, it's not about how many friends I have contracts with. It's about uh -huh. having contracts because we help each other. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you want to sign a contract to help me out? No. You would definitely use it against me in some negative way. Yeah. Guess we're not friends then. We're friends. You don't have to have, you, you are making lots of a, a, a correlations that do not have to be. Don't know what that is. Someone knock on his door. Okay. We, we 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 don't need to fight. There there, there is a um a somewhat right. coercive element to our contracts with Nightlinger, but we entered that means. into them voluntarily. I, I believe there is no answer while Mida stumbles through his explanation on the steps of the wagon. Uh, uh, Nightlinger, it is Celestina Moldavanu. We have returned from uh, technically from the dead. Yeah, you're good friends here, and dead. your three other property people. <sighs> Also, uh, I forgot that you have the trouble magnet hindrance uh, ag I do. again. So um, I would like to say, in addition to the minus one, uh, Vika flew off with your lenses. <laughs> <laughs> she likes shiny things. What can I say? And um, all Celestina told you as she flew away was that Vika was screaming about a nest. She uh, was nest. nest. Uh, well, okay. I, I, I don't, I don't want to make trouble, but actually, the. The, the, the first layer of those glasses is prescription, so I, I, I can still see okay, but, but it's, it's going to be difficult to do a lot of the, 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 the fine work that, that, I, that I'm supposed to do in... I, I'm sure she'll bring them back at, at, at some point. Well, still no answer as this is happening. You have to be prepared <laughs> to on, lose glasses. Hold on, everybody. I'm going to kind of step in front of the door real quick. Um, first off, uh, thanks Hunters Entertainment for the raid. I appreciate it. Hey, hello. Oh, yeah. 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 hello. Yeah, shields up, everybody. Um, uh, I, how do I put this? Um, yeah, I don't know how much Notlinger necessarily 
um, fought to get us back. Why do you say this? What do you mean? Well, I was talking uh, to Leonard, and um, it seems like most everybody had voted to go back into the hunting grounds to find us and get us back. Right. You don't leave a carnet behind. Right. Yeah. But uh, Nightlinger overruled them. Oh, what? What? Well, if, if if he overruled that, th th there must have been a, 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 some reason that, that he has not explained, or, or, or some some method that he had to to find us and pull us out. Uh, for all we yes. know, the things that happened in there could, could have been because of, of something the Nightlinger on the outside did to to draw us out. Well, I I'm saying this just so that we have cards on the table. Okay, uh, we don't necessarily have to tell Nightlinger that we know what he did, but. Uh, I, I think it's good for us all to know going in and when we talk to him exactly what's happening here. Okay. Or we'll tell him to get his ass out here and explain what the hell's going on. Well, that's one way of doing it. Victor's going to walk past Buster and just start banging on the door. Nightlinger! Victor! Get your ass out here! This no way to talk to a very powerful man. Well... Doesn't sound like he thinks of us very much, so I may not think very much of him. He probably had good reason, like might I say, you know Nightwinger. You yeah, work in mysterious way. Like, it seems like he doesn't even think enough of you to answer the door because there is still no answer from within. Uh, well, uh, there, there's there's right. a chance that he he is not here, and and no. we are knocking on a a door that is that is not currently Nightwinger's door. Yeah, he's probably not here. He is probably overseeing the setup. You'll know. Right. Uh, Victor. When have down. you ever it's known okay. Nightlinger to oversee the setup? Oh, okay. Yeah. This yeah. is just the thing I say. He has lots of things he goes and does. He doesn't just stay in his wagon all the time. That would be weird. <laughs> what does he do, Celsius? He's such a good friend of yours. Where Where do you think he is right now? Well, he, he goes about to collect... Uh, items of interest for the, uh, the the curio wagon. He goes to make connections with a powerful people. Or when we go to new locations, he's helpful. He, I don't know what he does. I'm not his secretary. I'm just friend. Listen, all I'm saying is Nightlinger has done something for all of us to keep us here, right? Like we've all done something or been somewhere or had something happen to us where we needed help and Nightlinger came in and did something to help us out with that. Yeah, I'm wrong? not saying nothing about that. We clawed our way out of hell to make it back here and to find out that he didn't even want us. That don't feel great, Buzz, I gotta say. Uh, 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 all right, v Victor, I, I think that, that you are correct in, in being upset about this, but- Thank I, you, I, I am I, upset. I, but but I, I I think that if we are going to talk to Nightlinger, uh, you need to calm down. And uh, I have I have something that I think can help with that. This always is very calming to me. And he pulls out like a Jacob's ladder from his pocket. And is like here. What, what is, is this? Uh, well, you just take the the top uh, thing and you turn it, and it the whole it, it, it cascades down. Oh hey, you four. Hey, hey you looking for Nightlinger? The four yes. of you turn around and see Lunk, the carnival's uh, oh. animal handler, the the slab of of man that seems to have just been genetically gifted with every single attractive characteristic that a man could have, regardless of culture or sexual orientation. Uh, <laughs> this guy just has the the features that look like they were designed to be carved into marble, um, and. God bless him. He's great with animals. Uh, uh, he's got he's got a horse that he's uh, <laughs> leading by the bridle uh, as he is walking around completely shirtless, uh, revealing his uh, his glistening physique uh, over his uh, his his tight jeans. Uh, uh, I, welcome, I feel that welcome back. As soon as he says that, I feel like Celestina would do this thing that Megan feels weird doing, but we're gonna do it anyway. She goes over. As soon as she sees him, she goes, Lunk! And she goes over, throws herself on him, and just starts making out with him. Uh, Lunk 
um, sort of, you see his eyes widen. The rest of you do. Celestina doesn't see much of any of this. Uh, you see his eyes widen, and then you just kind of see him shrug and let go of the bridle of the horse, and he puts his arms oh, around Celestina okay. and he only does it back. for a moment. It's like it's like a I've been in the hunting grounds for a long time. Greeting. That's oh, a friend. You are such a fresh face to see. He is being so dark in this dark place, but little dogs that have glowy eyes. Oh, you don't want to know. Okay. What are you saying about the night's link? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't think he's there. Yeah, no oh, shit. Where is he? Here's the bridal back, by the way. Oh, thank you. Meredith uh, has a tendency to wander off, don't mm. you, Meredith? <laughs> Uh, no, look, uh, the, the night man's little, uh, thingy is open, so oh. he must be out with, uh, with Nightlinger, hopefully, unless he's, like, behind my, behind me. Is he behind me? Uh, no, no. We, we, we are, we are looking behind you and, and probably would have mentioned it if, if he was there, but <laughs> I, I think that that is entirely the right way to be thinking about this situation. You guys have been gone for a while. It's like rule number 12, right? Like if the Nightman's cabinet is open, then Nightlinger is out loping. Lope mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't good at rhymes, Lunk. What's that? I said you ain't good at rhymes. Oh, buddy. I, I missed you too. As far as I'm aware, there are only five rules, but I, I, I guess if there were more, then they would, that would be one of them. Yeah, well, uh, hey, pleasure seeing all of you. Uh, pleasure seeing you, Celestina. Oh, you, as always. And uh, I guess I should get uh, Meredith back home before uh, people start asking questions. All right, here we go. Let's go. Well, it seems like uh, if Nightlinger needed to speak with us, it was not uh, uh, very important to do it in a timely manner. No, to be fair, th this this is not this is not how Nightlinger normally operates. If if he tells people that that he wants to speak with us, usually he he then 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 is is there to speak with you, or or he finds you or seeks you out. It it, it seems a little strange that, that that like maybe he's avoiding us. Yeah, maybe he forgot about us. Why would he be specifically avoiding us, though? Well, Especially with Nightman. He, he only comes out for very important moments. Uh, Buster, again, you hear a little burst of uh, what sounds like it, kind of high-energy conversation coming from over by the performer's tent uh, with Lucia and David. Um... Yeah, let's uh, let's move away from here. Let's uh, I I don't know. Some, something seems to be happening over here at the uh, performer's tent. I, I heard, overheard some some talking, and it just doesn't usually happen. Oh. And uh, welcome, Dat Network. Much obliged for you to show Hi. up. Hi, hello, hey. Dat Team. Welcome, everyone. We're just uh, we're just waking up in the carnival and trying to figure out our bearings. Prank wars. I don't. I don't get what the. What? Don't get that reference. Mm -mm. <laughs> All I know is that that network's really cool. So. Yeah, like. I don't... <laughs> the coolest. Yeah. Guys, Anywho. save it for the prank war, okay? <laughs> uh, listen, right now, uh, you are at the carnival. You have woken up, Nightling. There was a message that was left for you by Mama Lou saying Nightlinger needed to speak with you, but he's not in his wagon, and you haven't seen him about. There's. Weird activity happening all over the carnival. You've been gone for a month. You feel kind of on the back feet. So what maybe, do you want to do? Maybe I, we try to find the Mama Lou. Maybe she has more information for us. Well, I do think that we should get some more information, but uh, why don't we just pop over to the to the tent real quick and see what some of the other people are saying, just, just okay. to get maybe a little bit of a different story. As it yeah, were. One of them's got to see that purple bastard walking around here somewhere. Yeah. You said purple? You mean outfit. I see. Whew. All right. So you all are heading over to the performer's tent? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so you head that way, and as you get closer, now all of you can definitely hear the sign, uh, or the sounds of semi-raised voices. Again, I say this because Lucia and David often don't have anything to say whatsoever, but as you come around the back of one of the tents, you see the two of them. Lucia looking uh, like the 19-year-old, very, very slender uh, young lady that she is, but dressed in her somewhat uh, feminine version of the traditional circus strongman outfit. And David, and David, the, the pale, <laughs> scabby, uh, skinny, shadowy looking guy, just standing there wearing burlap pants tied together with a rope and wearing as per usual, that weird scarlet leathery bag around his neck, just contrasting with his pale skin. Now, both of them typically are more than happy to let their performance do the talking. Uh, but right now they seem to be having some sort of argument with each other. And as you get closer, uh, you make out bits like, no, Ar Lu Lucia, you, I, I, I just, I feel like you're already on the stage and you, you don't want this in the same way that I do. So, so, so just, just, just let me have this. Uh, they seem to be arguing about, about stage time. And they, they see the four of you approach as you do, and, and they stop and, and just sort of turn and and look at you. And David kind of waves weakly. Hello, uh, weird clown. Howdy, David. Uh, Lucia. Hi. Hello. Um, you all see I, Nightlinger around here? Nightlinger? I don't think I've seen him at all today. What about okay. Mama Lou? Uh, David wouldn't know where anyone was. David has just been very focused on getting in my way all day. That is not fair. That is not fair to say. I've just been trying to talk to you, Lucia. Uh, uh, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, you want to maybe clue us in? We've been gone for a little while. Yeah, you have a month, but we still had to do shows. So uh -huh. in exchange for the spots that you all used to do in the showcase of spec of the spectacular, uh, I got an extended time slot and David got bumped up from doing the interstitial audience work to being on stage and getting his own performance. Yeah, and it's been going really great. I'm like the... I'm like the star attraction of the show right now. Okay, well, that's I don't. I don't know that stay. that's true. Well, sorry to put you out of business, so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of the thing. I mean, now that you all are back, you go back in the show, but Nightlinger was so impressed with uh, what we brought to the entertainment that he told us to decide amongst ourselves who was going to get to continue to do their bit in the show. And I'm trying to make the case that it should be me because Lucia already gets to be in the show. Wait, hold up, hold up. Does that mean he's cutting one of us? No. I don't he would think do so. Such thing. Did you not want to do it anymore? Because honestly, that would make things a lot easier for us. We wouldn't have to figure it out and we could just no, do no, it. no, no, you know, no one David is. David wouldn't have to keep. Fighting. No one is losing their spotlight. All right, we'll figure out a way to get everyone and keep everyone doing a show and being in the show. It's, that's okay, okay, but not everyone. Listen, it is, all she does is a strongman act. She's a one-trick pony, right? I, I can do a strongman act better than she can. As far as I'm concerned, uh, you'll yeah, both again. think. I said I can do a strong man act better than you can. Oh. Say that one more time though, just for fun. Don't, don't say I, it again. They seem to be David ramping David. up into something uh, here. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't feel very friendly with each other. Things, a dynamic seems to have shifted yeah. here in your absence. Uh, I said. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, 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 I know that I, I could not do a strong man act as, as well as either of you, so. Uh, I, I think 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 that there's there's cl cl clearly room for uh, strong strong and um. Uh, Titus, if, we need if, to go find Mama Lou. 
Let's go find Mama Lou. Let these two argue over nothing. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Now that you're here, uh, you're, you're performers and everyone respects your opinion when it comes to the showcase. So why don't we, uh, well, why don't you tell us which one of us should get the chance to, to, to remain a part of the, of the showcase. We can, we can do a, a sort of audition of sorts and, and get no. your feedback. No, well, neither well, one of you. We take over our slot back in the not be your room for you. I, I'm not a performer, so obviously I, I have no dog in, in this fight. <laughs> well, you get your slots back, Celestina, but there's still a little more time built into it for those of us that, you know, have been doing the work and been here. Yeah. How no, was I... it, by the way? How was it? I was what? Oh. Don't distract them. Don't, dis she's trying to distract you from the matter at hand. Okay, now, 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 now you all have to, have to the, 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 give us, give us something to do as performer. We'll, we'll yeah. do it. And, and you all be the judge of who did it better and who gets to stay in the okay. show. David. I want you both to make cookies mm. and we pick which cookie best cookie. I don't okay. think that's a good idea. Okay, cookies. What, we cookies, Buzz. Don't listen to her, David. She's just lying to you. It's what performers do to people who aren't really supposed to be in the show. Oh my God. Both of you are the worst. All right, Here, here's the thing. You know, as well as I do, that Nightlinger is the only one who can assign someone a role in the show. So you could perform for us and audition and do whatever the hell you want to do in front of us as much as possible, but we can't do anything, and no one can influence Nightlinger, am I right? I think yeah, maybe I, some of us can, but yes. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm inclined to agree with Buster. That's why I think this whole thing is ridiculous and a waste of time. However, as Buster, you were saying that, and Lucia responds, David has clasped two hands around that weird red leathery bag uh, hanging around his chest and he started sort of whispering to himself. And then you see him look up and say, all right, no, fine, if there won't be an audition, then I'll just prove the strong man aspect of it. And as he says that, his body starts to change and starts to bulge out in odd places as his arms lengthen and his muscles seem to fill in until they're bulging and even tearing against the paleness of his skin. And as you watch, that red bag and the band around it gets shortened and shortened until it rides up his face and settles on his nose, a lumpy red bundle of leather at the end of his face as he swells up until he stands over seven feet tall towering down over over all of you all right now let's see about that strong man contest give us something to lift uh, I, uh you, you this you, is you, ridiculous you, david this is so over dramatic I, you, you uh, uh, david you 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 seem to to have, have got, gotten a little riled up you know what helps me and uh midas grabs the jacob's ladder away from um uh victor Yes, I suddenly couldn't remember. Uh, he grabs the Jacob's ladder away from Victor and is like, "Ah, here. Uh, look, this is called a Jacob's ladder, and uh, it's it's very no uh, problem." Cold. And he reaches out and just takes the tiny thing out of your hands and just rips it in half in one fluid motion. Easy. Give me a hard one. Uh, well, That's you could try problem. Christopher right there. Maybe you could try see if you could rip that little robot thing. Easily! Yeah, no. I'll rip his legs in half, and Lucia, you try and rip his arms, and whichever no. one of us can okay. is the winner. Christopher, oh. run! Run, Christopher! Hold on. Christopher! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I like this act. stopping or questioning or looking, you give the command for Christopher to run, and Christopher takes off in the direction that he is facing. Your act doesn't involve running, or...? No, he's no. gone! Uh, get him! No, no. And David get... takes off after Christopher oh, it, it doesn't uh, running run. through the carnival. Uh, All right. it's normal. Lucia just looks at each of you and sighs and takes off after David. What do you want to do? I you mean, now have a giant lumbering m muscle clown and Lucia chasing after Christopher, who is just running in a beeline through the middle of the carnival. I say problem solved. Let's go find Nightlinger. How far away is my velocipede from here? Your velocipede? You have no idea where your velocipede was. Your best, your your best guess 
is that it is at your wagon, um, but you're not exactly sure where that is uh, in the setup. It might have changed. Well, okay, Midas is going to take off after um, David and Christopher to try okay, and make so, sure. So Midas takes off after uh, David and Christopher and Lucia. Midas, what are you trying to do? You see David just thundering through the middle of the carnival and people diving to get out of his way as he crashes through uh, through things in pursuit of Christopher and Lucia is right on his heels. I'm mostly just yelling things like, evasive maneuvers, Christopher! I, I, I duck, duck under! I don't, uh, no, don't, don't, don't tear him apart, no! Okay, uh, give me a, um, give me a persuade roll. No, no, give me weird science, weird science. To uh, you were trying to sh- What's up? Uh, to command Christopher? Basically, you're trying to give him some sort of useful command on the fly in the midst of this chaos. So yeah, give me a weird science roll. All right, aced it. Okay, so that's an 11. An 11, okay, that is a success with a raise, almost two. So you shout out evasive maneuvers to Christopher and Christopher just swivels his head back and looks at you as his body continues to run in the opposite direction. And then he starts doing this little weird like hopping crab lateral movement every now and then, uh, just kind of like leaping around like some sort of clockwork toy. And David, every time he does that, tries to smash him with his hands uh, and always Ooh. guesses wrong as far as so, which direction he's so going. Close. While Lucia can continues to shout at him. Anyone else doing anything in this situation? Um, uh, I I would like to try to yell out and um, just try to calm. Well, first I want to try to yell out and tell everyone to make way and then um, uh, uh, just try to calm the situation if I can. Like, Okay, uh, um, so give me a persuasion roll, uh, Buzz, and I'll, I'll give you, uh, well, this is just gonna be one persuasion roll. We'll say the make way part happened for free when the giant clown and <laughs> uh, and Christopher started running through everything. So people are more than willing to listen to that. Okay. Give me your persuasion roll. Not bad, that's a seven. Uh, yeah. A seven? That's seven, yeah. All right, I shall oppose this. Since folks are confused, I just got a two. I will re-roll with a curious ticket. That is a one. I can only roll twos or ones. And that yeah, time it ow. was worse. Um, so you shout out uh, just that everyone should get out of the way and clear this up and, and knock this off. This is crazy and counterproductive, whatever you're shouting out to everybody. And yeah. people start jumping out of, out of the way and looking at you. And you feel like you see Lucia turn back and look at you. What are you shouting at them, uh, Lucia and David? I, I, I'm going to be like, do you want to get on Leonard's bad side? Because this is how you get on Leonard's bad side. That is not what you want. Um, and as Lucia pops her head over her shoulder to look at you, she just sort of cocks one eyebrow a little bit in recognition and puts on another burst of speed as she runs towards David, who now has Christopher backed up against a large pile of uh, tent masts and is advancing on him. And just as David is about to reach down and grab Christopher, Lucia just comes up behind him and puts her arms around his waist and lifts the giant hulking seven foot clown up off of the ground and then repositions him in her hands so that she She's now supporting him on his back like a tortoise above her head. David, David, listen to Buster, okay? Leonard is going to be really upset and you know that you don't think straight when you get like this, David. Put me down, put me down. I'll tear his legs off and I'll tear his arms off and then I'll be in the show. David. Uh, yeah, just kind of looks around and looks at all of you and looks at the faces of everyone in the carnival, just sort of staring aghast at the spectacle. I don't think your odds are good, David. This this was not a good audition, if that's what this was for, David. Ew, I mean, you didn't David. Even get, you didn't even get him, so. Well, I was, I was, I was interrupted. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get a fair chance. And as he's yeah. saying all this, his body is sort of like deflating in a way, almost like the air is being let out of him as he shrinks back down to his normal scrawny frame. And the weird red leathery pouch lengthens its string and falls back down around his chest again. Are you good? Can I put you down? Yeah, you, you can put me down. Lucia puts David on the ground. Oh. 
Okay. That was weird. Uh, hell of an act. Yeah. Hell of an act. I, if, if it were up to me, both of you would be on there. This was a great precursor to what could, could be on okay. stage. And when we find Nightlinger, I will put in a good word. Lucia uh, looks over at David and looks at all of you and says, David, I think there's something else that you maybe need to say to everyone. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I got out of hand because I wanted to be in the show. Mm -hmm. David, uh, I, I think there's, there's someone specific that you should apologize to. Yeah, it's me for wasting my time. Right. Victor, I'm sorry. I know that your time is very valuable. It is, yeah. I apologize for okay. wasting it. I think we're I'm wrapped up here. I'm real disappointed, but all right. Maybe I, I can make it up to you. I, 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 I don't know where Nightlinger is, but I, I've been keeping tabs on everybody today, just making sure that someone was nearby to view my audition. What? Well, I, 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 I'm, in, I'm in Christopher, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where's because, Nightlinger? What, what do you know? Uh, like I said, I, I haven't seen Nightlinger all day. What well, about his, have you seen? Yeah. What about the Nightman, his bodyguard? No, no, I, I, I'd know if I'd seen the Nightman, and okay. I ain't seen the Nightman. I mean, Mama Lou? Oh, uh, Mama Lou was gonna help Eustace with something, I think. Okay. Uh, she mentioned needing to find some place quiet to prepare herself quiet all right where would that be well uh, i don't know after that she left well, I, I was trying to get her to watch the audition and, and she wouldn't have it yeah she's no not wanted to watch it because there's no need to have an audition because nightlinger makes the decision right right but just in case just in case well uh, right uh, 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 Speaking of Eustace, I, I should probably find him. I haven't talked to him since I woke up, and uh, normally he, if I do, I'm off on some other task, he just sort of lets my to-do list build up, so. Oh, oh, Eustace is easy. He's over by the uh, discombobulator. They're getting it set up. All right. right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Now, okay. you two play nice. And, uh, you know, work on that act. The, the whole lifting thing, that was great. Yeah. No, I think you're right, Buzz. I think there really could be something to this if we work together. Maybe. All right. Thanks. Thanks, you four. We'll, we'll see what we can come up with. For okay. some weird reason. For some weird reason, I feel like my character is supposed to date Lucia's <laughs> uh, in this Oh yeah, is it because is it because uh, she's got a Daria esque disposition? Why yes. Hey, <laughs> don't have a type. <laughs> Good job, Buzz. You solved the uh, that weird problem for them. I guess you also got with people. <laughs> you know. Anyway, let's find Eustace. <laughs> All right, so you know where Eustace is. Uh, you have an inkling where Mama Lou is. There's still weird sights and sounds all over the carnival. There's maybe personal things you want to attend to. Whatever you want to do. Where do you want to go? What do you want to see? Uh, well, I, I think see. finding Eustace is, makes the mm -hmm. most sense. But Finding yep. Eustace is often very easy. You follow the sound of a hammer on metal, and uh, as long as you keep walking, you will either find Midas or Eustace. And since Midas is right here, it's easy to know who's making that hammer on metal sound off in the distance. Do you follow it? Yes. You follow, follow it. sound. What's up? I said Could follow you... sound. Uh, we, I do not know what you mean by sound. Can you please <laughs> write that in a different way? Uh, open um, sound, and take sound. Eustace. Look, sound, there is no sound here. Will you follow the sound of clanging metal and hammers? Yes, you will. And you follow it over towards the sideshow and attraction area of the carnival where you see the Faraday wheel has been erected. The, uh, oh man, uh, hold on. The Vibromatatron is mm -hmm. be has been set up. However, the discombobulator is in a state of disarray, just a pile of tubes and pneumatic pieces and metal 
uh, hunks all looking like a Lego set that has just been dumped out of the box and not put together. And over there in his weird science uh, conveyance mobile chair uh, is Eustace T. Ellington uh, sitting in his uh, chair and just with a hammer, just bashing against one bit of the discombobulator in frustration. Blast you! Dag Nabbit machine! What did it work? Damn you, work! That usually does it. <laughs> Actually, that, that does work a surprising amount of the time, Celestina. Oh! Doodle Pip, my boy! Well, Midas, you've you made it back, and your friends! Oh, it's delightful to see you! And he, he um, pushes the lever on his chair and comes wheeling crazily over towards you, uh, and he runs into your uh, knees and shins with his chair, Midas, as he as he uh-huh. gets over. Oh, sorry! Sorry! I'm a little exuberant today! Ah, uh, yes, well, uh, I, 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 excitement is uh, somewhat merited. It, it has been some time since since we've we've been... Uh, since I've been back at, at the carnival and we are now awake. It has been over a month, boy, and I was convinced that you and the rest of you were all deceased. So yes, yes, it has been some time, and yes, I think I shall enjoy the exuberance of this occasion. <laughs> well. Aha, uh-huh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, yes. You this- I, I wanted to show you. Uh, Christopher, do your trick. I'm Scary. Christopher. Uh, the flip Christopher. Christopher just like uh, widens his eyes and sort of toddles into the middle of all of you and then just gets down uh, and slowly goes into a squatting move. I'm... Make a performance roll for Christopher. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, aced it. Yes, it's a five. A five is a success. I'm Christopher. And Christopher just leaps up directly into the air and at the very top of his arc, tucks his legs in and does a backward somersault, landing on the ground in a much steadier way than he had been previously because he's taken a tip from Lottie and is landing on all fours now. Ha! <laughs> oh, now, that's now, worse than before. That movement was, was created by Christopher entirely observational by taking in the actions of another being, which Horrifying. is- it, it, entirely what, what I was hoping to achieve with uh, his intuitive systems. My boy, my boy. This is brilliant. You say, you say he did this observing another being. What type of being? You must tell me everything about what you four encountered. What was yes. it like? Where did you oh. go? What did you see? Tell oh. me. Lots of crazy weird things. Yes, oh. well, specifically, the, the animal that was doing a flip was a small Pomeranian. With uh, glowing eyes that would talk in your brain. A little dog. Yes. A little or dog I... that spoke in your brain and did backflips no. and taught Christopher to do backflips. Yes. Uh, yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. What else? What else? What was, what was the most wondrous? What was the most terrible? What was the, the thing that shall haunt your nightmares and dreams for the rest of your days? Ah, uh, well, we, we were ghosts uh, for a day. I wasn't. Uh, I got to be buried alive. Ah, uh, a, a troll uh, tore Victor apart for a small amount of time. Oh yeah, uh, that shit happened. Uh, we, we found a lady from uh, 1947. Uh, she lived in clock building in graveyard. Oh. Fascinating. And I see Victor got the worst of it. Well, well, uh, yes. what an extraordinary venture. At some point, at some point, I owe each of you a brew and we shall sit down and you mm. shall regale me with your adventures. But I, I, I apologize now is not the time. I, I am in the midst of trying to get this Infernal machine up and running! Midas, Midas, my boy, now that you're here, um, 
Uh, might I consult with you on, on an issue? Uh, uh, of course, Eustace. Uh, uh, perhaps the rest of you as well, since uh, you have been uh, more well-traveled now. Who knows what you may have seen that might be of use. Uh, uh, please, please come in, but uh, let's keep this between ourselves, shall we? Okay. I don't want to cause a panic. About what? Uh, Eustace wheels in a little closer towards all of you and then motions frantically for you all to lean in towards him so that you form a very suspect looking cluster around him as you all lean over. I am afraid that we might have a gremlin infestation. God damn it. Like, are you drunk, be... Eustace? Well, I am insulted, boy. So I am not drunk. It is only 11 a.m. I have two hours yet before I start to hit the sauce. Uh, oh, okay. What do you mean by gremlins? Like an actual creature named gremlin? Or Will, is it, it, it... Uh, Celestina and Midas and anyone else who wants to make an occult roll for me, please. Don't have a uh, actually, Midas, for you, uh, give me a weird science roll at a plus one. Okay. Aced it twice. I got nine. A I nine, got, but a you're holding up three. eight fingers. Shh. <laughs> you know, you got an eight because... with a plus one, no, it's a nine. nine. You both got a nine or an eight plus one. Um, so mm -hmm. that is a success with a raise. So through your various different channels, uh, Celestina, you know that gremlin is a term that you have heard before assigned to a creature. Whether or not it is exactly the same kind of gremlin that Eustace is referring to, you're not sure, but you do know they have their little spirit beings that have a tendency to gunk up the works of machines. Midas, you definitely know what a gremlin is because they are a occupational hazard of weird science. Sometimes when you push too far and you try and get an idea that's a little bit too out there, you can actually, in some way, tear a very small hole in space-time through which gremlins will pour through and infest the device, causing all manner of horrific malfunction that could lead to loss of the device or loss of life, if not dealt with. I sort of imagine that even though I probably have not, like, created a gremlin thing before maybe when i was like working in uh with smith and robards and like training in their things like there were protocols in place for if that happened smith and robards uh did indeed have a gremlin protocol and this was something that you were under contract not to reveal to the public at large but if and when there was ever an infestation of gremlins they did have a protocol to shut down and clean out the entire factory I don't want to cause any alarm, what? but I think that there can be no other explanation for how and why the discombobulator continues to misbehave on such a scale. I am worried that if this problem goes unaddressed, that we may once again have some loss of life on our hands at the carnival's operation. Ah, uh, oh, okay, so... We've also heard that uh, uh, people have things going missing. You think this is gremlins doing all of that? <clears throat> I was not aware of this. Oh. I suppose it could be. Yes. Well, I see. The more I think about it, no reason not to ascribe all of our personal ills to these creatures. After all, uh, they move about unseen. It could be all due to them, perhaps. They're why seems... you four got lost in the hunting grounds. Perhaps they're responsible for the loss of my legs. Maybe Wait. they caused the war. What okay. is happening? You go too far. I think he's bullshit. What? It's, it's, it's not a catch-all. It's just the, 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 this other thing also happening. Seems like they go together. Logic. Listen, I'm sorry. I must have digressed for a moment, but I don't want to alarm anyone. There may be gremlins about. Oh, God damn it. Is this normal behavior? No, wait, 
Yes, yeah. you all know this oh. is absolutely normal <laughs> behavior for Eustace. Okay. I don't know why we came to talk to this unsufferable goddamn man. No. Eustace. Uh, v Victor, if if there are in fact gremlins that that have in, infested or come out of the Vibratron, then that is a very serious uh, issue indeed. But it, it seems unlikely to that they 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 would uh, limit their their activities to uh, uh, stealing things from Victor. As you as you uh, are listening to Midas, you hear a you feel a tapping on your right shoulder. Who does? Victor does. Victor. Oh. You look over there and uh, you see a little mechanical hand on an extendable arm that squirts uh, a little bottle of water directly into your face. What the hell? And then from the other side, once your face is uh, wet and dripping, another mechanical hand just points a little sparking fingertip onto your face and you feel electricity course through your face as your expression locks up in a... Uh, <laughs> I will thank you to watch your tone around me, young man. I have seen more things in this world than you could dare to comprehend. And also, that is a hilarious expression. Be careful that you don't make it for too long or your face might stay that way. <laughs> you do that again, old man. That's the last expression you ever goddamn make. Oh, okay, Victor. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, everybody. Let's uh, just <clears throat> cool off for a moment. It's not worth the uh, spilling blood over, yes? Okay, <laughs> Victor, I, I, I'm sure you, you didn't mean any of that. And and uh, Midas kind of like leans yeah. into Victor and is just like, Victor, I, I know he seems like just an old man sometimes, but you have no idea what some of the devices he has created are are, are capable of power wise. Victor, you don't spend a lot of time around Eustace, uh, and. Possibly because he rubs you the wrong way. He's very eccentric. But you do know very easily from just being around the carnival that a lot of people do uh, give Eustace a fair amount of respect. That doesn't mean you have to. You just know that people who get a lot of respect in the carnival typically have a reason that they have earned it. Yeah. Anyone else have fancy no. words about gremlins or does anyone else need a good shock face? I don't think we need any shocking faces. Thank no. you. Um, you. Eustace, could you uh, uh, illuminate us as to where Mama Lou may be? Ah, yes. Well, Mama Lou has seen fit to aid me in this endeavor. You see, the only way to rid a device of gremlins is to destroy the device. Step one, well, that's obviously not going to be an option since this is the discombobulator, one of my prides and joys. Uh, a second option, uh, to perform a, a, a banishment ritual of some kind to, to force them spiritually out of the device. Or third option, bring the device onto consecrated ground. And Wait. this seemed the easiest option, just to have Mama Lou uh, consecrate the earth here. Oh, so she's okay. cons consecrating the whole camp. Heavens no, that oh. would be outlandish. No, she will just be <laughs> consecrating the 10 by 15 foot rectangle that I have marked out here around the outskirts of the discombobulator. Well, right. where is she? I don't see her. She left to prepare. She oh. said she had to get herself in the proper spiritual headspace to be able to do this thing, and she left me to continue to try to assemble this blasted machine. Oh, okay. But I, I did hear that there's a, a, a very lovely uh, creek or stream around here somewhere, and uh, Mama Lou does so love running water. I imagine that she's somewhere over there, if that's the case. What about Nightlinger? Nightlinger! Have ha! You seen him? Don't see him over here trying to construct the discombobulator or get rid of the gremlins or stop that, that lunk fellow from cavorting about with everyone in town. You know, I thought he had quite a nice time in the town of Iron Spring, if you catch my drift. Oh! Well, we should have stayed longer, I guess. Well, it seems like that was definitely a danger for the four of you, but we fixed that, haven't we? Yes, yes. Now, either pick up a hammer and get to banging, 
or make yourselves useful elsewhere. You don't want Nightlinger to wander around and, and, and happen to see the four of you doing nothing to help set up. Why, well, that's his purview to do nothing. The rest of us must work. Uh, yes. I feel if yeah. Lunk came around again, Princess here would get to banging right quick, but... Princess is not my name, Buster, you know. And yes, I will. <laughs> oh. oh, all right. Uh, also, uh, Eustace, I, <laughs> I happen to have, have misplaced uh, my, my weird, uh, my, sorry, my, my, uh, some of my, my new science tools in the hunting grounds. They, they fell off of a ship that, that we somehow summoned out of, out of nothingness. I um, this. So I, I, if, if there's a way that I could, I could put an order in, uh, for, in our next town, or it, uh, I... My boy, there is no need. Despite my fervent knowledge that you would indeed all be back, and in record time, I did take the liberty of ordering a new set of tools for my new apprentice, should the need to hire one arise. <laughs> Which it hasn't. So uh, you may collect them uh, from the apprentice of your wagon. You may collect them from your wagon, which is the apprentice wagon, because you are an apprentice, and that is your wagon. You have your own wagon now? Uh, well, um, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, technically, uh, I sleep in Eustace's uh, workshop wagon, but uh, it right. is... Oh. Now it's called the apprentice wagon for reasons I would rather not get into. I mean, it feels like it's pretty yep. clear why it's called the apprentice. You know why it's not? It's not important. I don't really want to get into it. Um, I, I'm gonna go because I ain't good with this kind of iron. Different kind of iron. I'm I'm better with. So I'm just gonna head over that stream and maybe see if Mama Lou's around. Yes, yes, go shoot some cans. And if you do see the old lady, you let her know that Eustace is ready and impatient. Yeah. Great, I'll, got it. I'll be sure to mention that. And you all leave. Uh, it appears that Eustace is having a little bit of a manic day. And it also appears that it, it might be time for us to take a very brief biological reprieve. My so if you all will do us the kindness of waiting straight. right where you are while we take a few brief moments to make ourselves relieved, we shall be back post haste. Can, can I post say- Dom has a question. Dom? I, I just want to say two things real quick. While, okay. while y'all are taking a break and you're, you're enjoying yourselves, and we do hope that you're enjoying yourselves. One thing, oh. two things, two things. First of all, okay. if we hit, what's the sub goal today? 25 new subs. 25 new subs. And they get a song? Uh, well, no. This oh. week, they would get a double draw card. They'd get a... However, oh, okay. if you wanted to sweeten the pot and make it be a Dom song and a double draw Dom, um, I won't stop you. I I'll tell you what. Yeah, you'll get... We'll sweeten the pot. If we hit 25 subs, we get a double draw tonight. And next week for the finale, I will play... My song that I will write of our adventures in the hunting grounds. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's cool! And like an original song, an original song, and uh, also I have a really good idea for a new emote, and we're we're uh, about <laughs> three hundred sub points away from uh, unlocking another emote. But oh, uh, you know uh, that that. That's anybody, really, uh, as long as you resub or whatever. So that would be awesome. Anyway, think about that, and now we're going to go on a break. All right, you think about that. We'll be right back. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello. We're back. We're back from our very brief break, and now we would like to jump back into things here on Wild Card. So thank you for joining us, folks. Um, It looks like we have a couple of toasts to attend to before oh. we jump back into things. So everyone- I forgot my glasses got stole. Yeah, a crow took your glasses. A Gee, raven. It's a raven. a raven. A oh raven, I, I, I fixed it. Um, everyone oh raise your drinks of choice. Shimmickson would like us to toast. Listen, if you've not died and woken up in someone else's corpse, you've not really lived, Victor. Ultimate <laughs> pen, ultimate. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Shimixon. 
Also, Shimmickson would like us to toast, there may not be time for breakfast, but there is always time for everyone's favorite gourmet meal, brunch soup. <laughs> and knock them down. Thank you very much. That's uh, eggs in a broth of mimosa. Oh. <laughs> and Yanto7 <laughs> would like us to toast. I am totally here for the dawning class consciousness in the carny proletariat tonight. <laughs> Let Nightlinger tremble. Animal training himbos and full size Christophers have nothing to lose but their chains. <laughs> Viva la carne revolution! <laughs> yeah! Up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Yanto7. And also, can we keep that revolutionary talk to uh, you know our breaks, please? Uh -huh. <laughs> No. Great use also, of the word himbo. Um, with wherewithal, would like to give a curious ticket to the players. <gasps> Thank, Thank you. you. However, Zwater ZA and Great Sage Under Heaven would each like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Aww. Thank you very much for that. And also, the Posh Panda would like to give one. Nope. Nope. This is happening as I'm looking at it. <laughs> I I see that they sub. Thank you for uh, thank you uh, for subbing the podcast. Resubbing. Um, That's three years. Three years. While Thanks we wait for the panda. drum roll, did, while we, while... what do we do on those sub on that sub goal, uh, Dom? How are we looking on that? Well, uh, we are looking um, great because we did hit that sub goal. We uh, did it. Yeah, Woo! yeah. Yes. Well done, everybody. And thank you okay. so much. All those gifted wow. subs. Thank you so thank much you to guys. everybody. Thank you. So not only, not only are we getting a new original Dom song next week for our finale, but since I said there was a double draw, even though I forgot that I didn't actually write that on the reward sheet, but I did say it, we will award a second draw. <laughs> <laughs> draw. Draw. Oh, right Wait, now. Oh, cool. I'm confused. You're all too late. Everyone is too late. The only person who wins is the first one who was confused, which is Victor. Victor, you get to uh, draw. It's my first draw of the season. Wow. It's my first draw of the season. I almost made it through the entire season without a draw. Well, you broke your streak tonight, uh, I'd like Francis. the seventh card from the top, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. You want seven or the one underneath the seventh? The seventh. The seventh card is peace. Play oh. to improve the initial attitude of a individual or group one level uh, using the reaction table in Savage Worlds, which I don't tend to use. So that reaction level change will happen uh, narratively. Oh, cool. cool. So basically cool. Uh, you can make a group uh, react better to you. So thank you very Ooh. much for that, Mysterious Strangers. Victor, you got that in play. Don't forget, okay. Celestina, you have your ace card to get an okay. automatic success with a raise on any oh, one roll. Was... And the Posh Panda would like to give their cursed point, ticket? curious ticket to <laughs> the table. Their it cursed is, wow. point. Thank you. It is close to cursed though, so. It's very point. difficult to keep That's our all mistake. of my vocabulary. Cursed Sports extra ticket. credit, curious point. ticket. Cursed extra ticket. Let's point. jump extra back in, ticket. shall we? Uh huh. Um, okay. So, Eustace has told you uh, what he suspects about the gremlin issue at the carnival. Um, you all uh, know at least a general direction where Mama Lou might be and know that she is a part of this. There are other things to investigate. If you so choose, what would you all like to do? Ah, uh, well, it seems like we should go uh, speak with Mama Lou since it seems almost impossible to find Night Linger today. I mean, with every person we talk to, we might get a little step closer to finding where Nightlinger has run off to. But, uh, yeah. Yes. I, I think you're right. We go talk to Mama Lou. Also, rivers are nice, so. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> water is nice. I like water. <laughs> yes. It's wet. I like <laughs> It's very wet and refreshing. So, you yep. guys are going to go try and find Mama Lou? Uh huh. That was my interpretation. No, we're of there that. for the water. <laughs> All right, here we go find some we like water. water. Um, so, uh, how would you like to go about doing that? Walk. I would like to walk. <laughs> uh, you would like to walk. Uh, Don't you however, adventure game us? <laughs> looking around, uh, you cannot walk water. Um, looking around, you do not see any immediate sign of any water about. It just looks grassy and plainsy uh, um, in, in most directions. Can I Bro just like- baby. No. <laughs> what? 
If any of you have survival, you could make a survival roll. Yeah, I have survival. Oh, yeah. I know where fucking water is. I don't know how to survive, so. No, I don't fucking know where water is. Just kidding. <laughs> Man, I real roller coaster it. with you tonight, Victor. Uh, that's I know a where seven. water is. No, I don't. A seven. <laughs> a seven <laughs> is a success. So, uh, Buster, looking around and seeing planes in all directions and wondering where exactly this water would be, you start sniffing the air for the telltale signs of water. <laughs> no, that's just me describing what you're doing. Actually, what you notice is that the land seems to be running at a general slope towards the back of the carnival, a downward slope, very slight, but enough of one that you can feel it with your feet and see it if you know what to look for. And you figure heading that way should head you directly towards the nearest body of water. Uh, at least that makes sense to you. Yeah. And this Victor. is probably where the glacier came through and carved a... Uh, <laughs> Listen, you got a seven, all right? That's not a raise, that's just a success. Uh, Victor sees a well and is like, I know exactly where water is. It's ready <laughs> I'll to I'll get dive to in. that water. <laughs> no, no, Victor, don't jump in again. <laughs> we won't save you this time. It went fine. I got up all by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're in episodes, you tend to crawl out of things. Graves... Wells. Yeah. Keep talking. You're going to crawl into one. A it well? was just not go to the graveyard. He's <laughs> all I ask. I'll shoot you and then you'll go. You'll crawl. Oh. Okay. All right. Wasn't my yeah. best way. So, so, we go, so we go down the hill towards okay. what uh, all right. I so hope will be water. start following the downward slope of the land away from the carnival, heading towards what Buster hopes is uh, a body of water. And as you start to head away from the carnival, the, the land slopes even more dramatically in front of you. Obscured as it was by the grass of the plains from further back, you now see that down uh, this little hill a ways, there appear to be a bunch of reeds and tall grass around what looks to be a small creek area. Um, Should it be like y'all for her, or I mean, it's long. Well, long. I have. I actually haven't finished telling you what you I'm see so sorry. down there. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, the reeds and and grass around what appears to be a small creek area, and over in those reeds, kind of down in the midst of them, and peering through them out into the water, you see Zeke, uh, Leduc's uh, sous chef, just frozen in the grass and staring. Oh, hell. Uh, Zeke! He, he looks back behind you and makes a frantic motion to, like, be quiet. <laughs> Why? It's probably that animal that we're supposed to eat for lunch, I guess. And then he goes back to, to, to watching the, the water, but he looks back over his shoulder and, and motions at all of you to come towards him. Okay. Yes, Zeke. Um... Do you all you all head over there? Okay. Yeah. Zeke, 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 yeah. Shush, 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 be quiet, be quiet. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Listen. I just I didn't want you to scare it away. Uh huh. Look, I think I found that entree that Mr. Leduc was talking about, <laughs> and he he sort of points um over into the water, and you see what looks like a log just floating in the stream, and then you see a little lazy flick of its long reptilian dinosaur-like tail and the log just glides a little bit further down the stream as you all stand there and watch, you see what appears to be around a 10-foot alligator just come lazily uh, moving down the creek. It doesn't appear to have noticed any of you. And as it starts heading a little bit closer, Zeke frantically motions for all of you to duck down in the grass. I think that's it. Do um, do any of us know what that is? Uh, is it common enough? I don't know. Let's see. Um, you know, Midas. I will say. I will say. Anyone can roll uh, science or academics with no penalty. Uh, if you want to roll common knowledge, it's going to be at a minus two. Well, I have a very good chance of knowing what this is. I got a five on a science. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Just roll common knowledge. I'm sorry. Make that your common knowledge roll. This isn't, this, these are freaking alligators. They're, <laughs> they're in lots of places. Um, oh. You might not have all seen one, but give me common knowledge. You got a five on common knowledge, Midas, screen wipe. Uh, you got a four, got a four. Um, Celestina? Yes. A four, a four as well. Victor? Yeah. A three for Buster. Uh, Buster, 
Um, I know what a know, crocodile is. I've never seen a gator. Know. Yeah, the teeth are all wrong on this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you've you've heard stories though, and and the others are all are all nodding, and you see them mouthing the word like gator or whatnot to uh, each other. So uh, you're like, oh oh okay. You haven't actually ever seen one gator. in person, but you've heard about them. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, I mean, I suppose that would feed quite a few people, but he's a very dangerous creature. How well, are you going I, to no, take well, it out? Mr. Leduc has, has, a, has a vision for um, what he perceives to be the, the next method of, of, of convenient food conveyance. Yeah. It is. He he aims the, to 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 popularize the spearing of meat on a on a on a, a wooden stick of sorts, so that folks may may eat uh, and pull uh, it off of the stick at their leisure while um, converting and transporting it around with ease. Okay, that's fine. But what does this have to do with this creature? Well, this was going to be the the item du jour. <laughs> for tonight's festivities. Victor's going to oh. pick up a, a stick on the ground and hand it, uh, like push it in front of Zeke and say, all right, go, start skewering, boy, go get it. What is oh, I'm, I'm supposed to take it alive. Mr. Leduc wants it tender. Okay, tender. Oh. hold on for one moment. How does Mr. Leduc expect you to do this, to take it alive all on your own? Wait, you I don't know, but he's gonna be so mad if I don't come oh, back with oh, it. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh, uh, look, uh, you, you need to calm down. I, I'm sure I've got some. And he looks at, uh, and Midas looks at the the half of of the broken Jacob's ladder. He's like, I'm sorry, I, I don't I don't have anything to calm you down. But, but... <laughs> please, 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 please listen, help listen, me, or else he's gonna have to be away. We can help. Potatoes for okay. For he's supposed listen, to come back I, alive. I don't know. Is he very large? Uh, I can I shoot at it? Like, no, 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 no. You don't want you don't want to mess up the meat by shooting at it. Now listen, listen, Zeke. All you gotta do those things they can't see an inch behind them. They can only see right in front of them. So if you get behind it and just start stabbing or whacking or did, did you bring a weapon? Did you bring something to, to do the business? Uh, he looks around and, and sees another stick on the ground, not quite as big as the one that you picked up for him. And he picks that up. I, I've got this. Yeah, that, that'll do great. So what you want to do is just go behind it and and whatever you want to, whatever you do, don't get in front of it. You don't want it to, you want it to see you. Okay. So just get behind it and just, you, you, you're gonna whack it, you're gonna stab it. What's your plan here? You gotta have a plan before you go over there. Well, I, I can't stab it because then- but Then, then you're gonna whack. Interfere. Uh, I gotta uh, whack it. Yeah, that'll tenderize uh, it. Uh, 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 Victor, if this is one of your jokes, uh, wherein you try and trick people into uh, killing themselves, uh, then I, I <laughs> it is very good and, and quite funny, but <laughs> I, I, I'm worried he's going to actually do it. Maris. He's a carny, he's one of us. I would not do something like that. That's why so, Frederick killed himself? <laughs> no, too dark, rewriting that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Mr. Parrish, I, I appreciate you trying to keep yourself entertained, but, but no, no, no. this I got is pretty back. serious, so, so If it maybe... turns around, I'll shoot it in the face, so go on. You know he won't miss. You know I Wait, won't miss. But then it'll be dead and I'll be in trouble either way. Well, okay, it's, it's well, even... do you want to live? Oh, oh, okay. Maybe with a couple extra hands, we could uh, uh, capture this thing. Uh, huh. Whose hands? I want to keep mine, please. Uh, well, I, uh, as you might have seen a while back, I have uh, been modifying Christopher so that uh, I can uh, get him to split into, uh, well, a slightly less effective, but temporarily quite useful uh, versions of Christopher. The gator is now kind of sort of swimming in lazy circles in this area of the creek. With uh, uh, two to three Christophers, uh, just to help in the process of uh, grappling this gator, I, I, I think perhaps that we could uh, to get the manpower necessary to, to uh, uh, bind its mouth and then it would be manageable. No, no, no. Zeke's got to learn to do things by himself. Ain't that right, Zeke? I am a cook. I'm yeah. not a hunter. In this well, one, 
I don't know, Victor. I've read that uh, that a big that a big thing, the t- task to have one person do. Personally, I, v- I vote for the lots of Christophers. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Do it your way, but coward well, the, way out, I say. Well, I'd still appreciate it if maybe you kept your gun trained on the creature just in case, Mr. Parrish. I don't know. I'll think about it. I will help you if Victor doesn't. Victor, it's not very nice. Look, a man's got to learn to take care of himself. Him and his own, him and his own you know? Victor, well, this is Vic- the, for the carnival. This is for the, the, the rubes. So, you know, if, if you want to take care of yourself, then, then you're being selfish because this is something I have to do for, for the family. Yeah, and you're right now, look, you're real scared of seeing that gator, right? You're yeah. real scared of going close to that thing because it could bite your head clean off. Hell, it could bite half your body. Just yeah. rip you right in half this, this in a works. split second if it sees you. Uh-huh. What is your aim, Victor? You're, you're scaring him more than he already was, which is it is pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to be part of this carnival, you got to bring something to the table. If you bring that gator to the table, you ain't going to be I... fetching no chickens for what's his name anymore. But I make a really good chicken fried steak. Well, you could Victor. still fashion chickens if you want to. I'm just saying you get to do other stuff, too. I, I, I want to make one point going into this, Victor. Now, have you ever had a meal that the Duke has made that, that, that has not been just amazing? I guess not. I don't know. So if, if Le Duke thinks that, that it's important to keep this animal alive and, and to return it to him, then it must be for something wonderful. Very sensible, Mr. Buchanan. I imagine Mr. Leduc has quite a quite a gourmet uh, delicacy plan. In fact, I'm sure that if he heard that you were instrumental in helping me to arrest this creature, then perhaps he would offer you some, even though they're meant to be just for the patrons this evening. Don't you want to find out, Victor? Don't don't you want to find out how that thing tastes? I heard he plans to fry it. Oh well, that's. That's pretty good. Well, I'm sure he ain't gonna fry it alive, so just oh, trying wait. to do an extra step. If you want to capture it, fine. I'm here for you. All right. Well, before it gets too far away, um, what's the plan, Mr. Buchanan? All right. Christopher, activate <laughs> grapple mode. <laughs> I'm Christopher. So I want to activate Christopher four separate times. Okay. All right. Um, so that is going to be um okay. So I know, I guess that takes four rounds, which and it's only a five round activation. We're, we're outside of combat, so we're gonna fuzz it a little bit. Um okay, but good, thank each you. Each time that you cast it, you'll be maintaining the previous one. Um, so I think you're at, is it a cumulative minus one for all maintained powers or just a minus one? I don't know. I, I didn't see anything. Actually, you won't be maintaining it because you're just casting it like for a one-time duration, essentially out of combat to have them go do this one task and then be gone. So yeah, let's just I, have, give me four separate weird science rolls. I, I will look into this afterwards, but I don't think it's necessarily like a maintained, well, but it can no be- No worries. Conti- Okay. Let's just get four separate rolls. Um, did anyone else want to do anything to support or affect this situation in any way? Victor, did you want to I... screw them up? No, no, I ain't here to screw nobody up. I'm just saying that just Zeke's saying gotta learn Zeke to do to things. Eaten. No, I'm not saying, I'm, I want Zeke to maybe almost get eaten and then overcome his fear of this object or whatever is happening. and learn to do things by himself instead of just happenstance people coming by and saying, hey, help me do this. Yeah, bootstraps. Yeah, bootstraps or some shit. Um, if I were to try to bolt this creature. I mean, you could definitely do that to weaken it up, but you might just blow it up as well. You don't really have a way to like control how fast it fires any more than you can really control how fast a bullet fires out of a gun. Sorry, gun people, if that's an easy thing you can do, but it serves the <laughs> metaphor. I mean, I can, so. Uh, um, okay. I don't I, know that there's much I can do then. 
who am I supporting here? Am I supporting Midas or am I supporting Zeke? Uh, that is uh, entirely up to you. This is Midas's plan. Don't don't support me. Support the Christophers. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. a horrible statement. I'd rather not. <laughs> uh, I, um, will, I, I will support. I, the Christophers need the support. I don't need the support. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling... Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, what are you going to say? I, I was just wondering how, what you guys want to support or how. I, uh, I, I, can I intimidate them into just going, Christophers, if you don't do this well, everyone will die, including <laughs> Midas. Uh, yes, you can, but don't do it yet because we only have one Christopher right now. Um, so save that. And then, uh, Buster, what did you want to do after uh, Celestina threatens death? Uh, well, I was probably going to counter whatever Celestina just did <laughs> with a little bit of helpful. I, I believe in you, little thing. Okay. You got this. So an intimidation and a uh, and a persuasion role uh, to to support their um, athletics, their grappling of this thing. Yes. Okay. All right. So first, let's get those Christophers. I got an eight, a nine, an eight, and a ten. An wow. eight, a nine, an eight, and a ten. So all of those go off with a raise, which means Christopher's oh, stats, I think, are a little bit higher. Is oh no, it actually, he's resilient. It, it, yeah, it makes him resilient. So he yes. can take a, each of those Christophers can take a wound. So and keep on kicking. Christopher stands there as you activate grapple mode, and he starts to vibrate a little bit, and then with a his arm, his other arm, and one of his legs pop off of his body and start spinning around in a circle on the ground. And as wires start to come out of Christopher to build spindly replacement arms for the ones that he lost, the leg and the two arms also start to have wires come out of them, building a wireframe Christopher body around the solid bit of the arm they have until there are four Christopher-esque things all standing there that look to their left and look to their right and look to you, Midas, and say, we are Christopher. Just awful. Do, do you just- Christopher's. Grapple that alligator. Oh, I don't know about this. This is getting weird. Um, okay, so um, before they do that, Celestine and Buster, let's get those support rolls. All right. Unless, unless you've changed your mind, Buster. <laughs> I'm just oh, curious boy. how much Midas puts, how much, how many wires Midas stuffs oh. into Christopher so that there's enough that will grow out. Well, there's certainly no human parts in there, so it must all be wire. There's no human parts in Christopher. Can I have a curious ticket? A curious ticket for Celestina to redraw. Uh, wow. A six I'm... for Buster. Um, I'm just going to stand by in case this goes to shit and just keep my gun out. Okay, all right. Sounds good, Victor. You've got your gun out and ready. A five for Celestina. So, yeah. Celestina, you tell the Christophers exactly how much trouble they are going to be in if they do not grapple this alligator. And they kind of step back from you one step all in unison. But then, Buster, you kind of come up behind her and tell them, like, hey, don't listen to her. You're going to do great. You're really good at grappling <laughs> alligators. And they yeah. look back and forth between the two of you, confused. I but... didn't say they were going to do poorly. I just said if they did poorly, everyone would die. So, we are Christopher. Yeah, and <laughs> hey, if you do great, no one will die. And I know you can do that because you love everybody. And at least one person here loves you. <laughs> Might kill one for fun. All right, so the four we'll Christophers, Christ thus emboldened, um, are going to four. attempt to run out into the creek and um, and grapple this alligator. So, Midas, you have four Christophers. What I would like you to do is roll Christopher's Athletics with a wild die to represent the group of Christophers going out and jumping okay. on them and add a plus two for the support of Celestina and Buster. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I aced it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I rolled an 11, but that's a 13. A 13. <laughs> okay, this will be opposed. Do you want to keep it? Yeah, I'm keeping it. A 13 is what you roll. So the Christophers <laughs> all at once start running down the banks of the creek and then leap off of the of the embankment as they all scream out, we're Christopher! And they all land in splashing uh, <laughs> explosions of water around the alligator and start clamoring onto the back of it and trying to uh, grapple it and keep it 
Still, the alligator starts thrashing about wildly. I rolled a six. Let me spend a curious ticket to reroll oh. that. That is a seven. Let me spend one of Not my enough. bennies to reroll that. That's a five. Okay, one more Benny. Last Benny for the alligator. Yes. Eight. Aced it on the D8. One moment. No. Wow. What did they roll? They got a 13. 13. 13. And 11 is what yes! I was able to get with the alligator. So the Christophers run out and start just climbing onto the thing, pushing it down under the water as it starts to roll and thrash. They start pulling at its tail and trying to get down on top of its head and keeping its arms and limbs tucked against the side of its body. The thing starts to list over to the side as it starts to move towards the edge of the creek. And that is when Zeke just goes crazy and just raises the stick up above his head. Ah! do it and goes down there and just starts bashing the alligator on the head over and over again while the christophers hold it we're christopher we're christopher we're christopher and it's bashing around in the creek until finally finally the alligator goes still and zeke is just standing over it and you can see the great beast's sides going up and down with its labored breath as the Christophers clamor onto it and push it up out of the creek. And Zeke, just wet from the waist down, comes up and stands over it like some sort of triumphant, scrawny teenage barbarian. <sighs> <That I did>. was... <sighs> yes, you, you did. Uh... Mr. Parrish, did you see? I oh. bashed it until it stopped moving after all the little robot boys held it. I tell you what, Zeke, you did fantastic. That's going to be one hell of a meal, and I can't wait to taste it. Worst thing. All right. I think, uh, I think I can probably drag this thing back uh, to the carnival. Do any of you have any rope or twine or something we could wrap around its mouth? Ah, uh, no. What if you just keep one of those Christophers holding the... Uh... The mouth shut while you bring it up. The Christophers all click and turn their heads towards you all at once, Midas. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. I wish I thought of that idea. That's a good one. Uh, uh, Christopher three and four. Uh, I clamp down on the on the the, uh, on the, 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 the creature's mouth and, and and go back with him. We're Christopher. Um, they just go and one of them lays on top of the thing's head and the other one comes up and crawls underneath its head and they just sort of hug each other on other side of its mouth. Uh -huh. And then they look at you and nod their heads. Um, meanwhile, right. Christopher too ra um, ravels himself down into an arm again and the arm just sort of crawls over and pops itself back on place on Christopher one's body. Wow, this is upsetting to watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure yes. is. Welcome right. to our everyday uh, bit. Okay, Marcus. well, if you understood the the complexity of of what it took to make a self replicating clockwork uh, uh, creation, then you would be very impressed. The amount of children you had to kill uh, to make that happen, I can't indeed. imagine. My this, uh, we do magic here, uh, so. <laughs> well, Long you do will magic. They keep its mouth closed. Uh well, I actually don't think they last. All that long before uh, they they you see uh, they, they they don't have a, a centralized power source. You like might want to move now, oh, Zeke. Oh no! <laughs> Get Zeke, Zeke grabs the thing's tail and like just sort of lugs it over his shoulder and starts like trudging up the side of the embankment oh. with the two Christophers just grinning emptily, hanging on to the the face of it as as they go. Thanks again. I'll send them. I'll send them back for you. Uh, they, they they should make their way back on their own. Ah! <laughs> and uh, Zeke takes the alligator off and back towards the carnival. Um, two things happen <gasps> after that. Sergeant Awesome awards one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you hear a, uh, a gentle giggling sound um, from further down uh, the creek. And you see Mama Lou uh, seated on the edge of the creek, just uh, on the other side of it from where you are. Um, the small, very small, very frail looking elderly Asian woman in her very uh, plain but faded colorful robe just sitting on the other side of the embankment and uh, smiling at all of you. Hmm. Oh. Well, that was delightful to watch. Oh, well, glad we could entertain you uh, in this very strange moment. 
Well, maybe that kid will be all right. I'm yeah. sure he will, Victor. You know, it only takes a, a little bit of nourishment and a, a guiding kind hand to bring out the best in people. Just want to make sure he doesn't turn soft or nothing. Soft is uh, underrated, I say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Mama, uh, thank you, uh, uh, for, you know, bringing everyone to help get us out of that graveyard and back in Iron Springs. That was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you were able to, uh, I guess, hear us in some way. <laughs> oh, think nothing of it, my boy. I'm sure that you all would have done the same for... Any of us. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, uh, we're looking for Nightlinger. Have, have you seen him anywhere? Hmm. Alas, no. Jebediah was struck with a, a mind to wander today, so I assume he's out and about, although I am sure that if you are looking for him and he is looking for you, you will encounter each other at the time that you are meant to. Oh, okay. Well, it's just that he, he said on your note that he wanted to speak with us. And um, um, also, just a, a, a little thing that we heard that uh, that Night Linger um, made the decision for a very good reason, I'm sure, to not uh, uh, try and find us in hunting ground. And I just was wondering what that reason was. Maybe if you know the reason. Hmm. He's obviously a good one. <laughs> it better be. You know, I am <laughs> out here on this beautiful day by this lovely stream, just sitting and trying to clear my head while I attempt to prepare myself to exercise the discombobulator. So why don't the four of you join me over here and sit for a moment and just listen? Okay, like to the river? Why not? It is okay. here. Okay, okay. All right, yes, right. okay, we can do this thing. It's good for magic, I see, yes. So are you all uh, heading over to her? Yeah, Celestina will go over there and sit down next to her and The, the creek's pretty shallow, or, or pretty uh, narrow at certain places, so you can almost just jump right over it and you make Celestine your way stomps, over to- stomps through it. Sure. <laughs> or you can stomp through it, your call. <laughs> you make your way over to where Mama Lou is uh, and you all just sort of sit down in the in the grass and she says, this is it, sit, sit. Now get comfortable and just Close your eyes and listen. Will each of you please give me a spirit roll? Oh. Six. Four for Celestina, six for Buster. Four for Midas. Four for Midas. Can I use a Ben Ben? A Ben Ben? You a can ben -ben. use a Ben Ben, Victor. Uh, oh, cool. I got a seven. Uh, wait. Demon. Damn. I wanted Damn. to use my Necco wafers. Oh, well, oh. I'll have to oh. save them. Sorry. All right. <laughs> um, so you all succeed. Will you please mark that you all succeeded mm -hmm. at meditating with okay. Mama Lou? Hmm. Okay. Listen to the water move and tell me. As the water flows through this creek, so too did the four of you move through the places that you traveled through in the hunting grounds, borne along by a current larger and stronger than yourselves. Tell me, what did you learn from your experience? Oh, that there are lots of strange things down there including a horrible Manitou who just want to seemingly devour you alive, and also that you can manifest very big things like bots, and also that uh, there are One is fine, Celestina. Oh. 
Sometimes oh, you, you fewer apt words will do where many words just buzz and distract. Yes, it is a strange place. And all of the darkest horrors and nightmares of our imaginations are born there, or perhaps that is how they enter our minds. But this world is a strange place as well, Celestina, perhaps equally, perhaps more so. What else? What else did you learn? Uh, oh. I learned that uh, you got to count on the people that you're closest to. And uh, sometimes uh, there's a thin line between uh, success or failure, but if you got good people by your side, that line doesn't matter as much as long as you get through it. Faith in your companions is important, Buster. And just as there exists the thin line you describe, so too does there exist a thin line between a good intention and a bad decision. Yeah. What else? Well, I uh, I learned at, at least, or I, I there's something um, that seems to have been the case there that there are worlds or parts of our world where where the rules of physics and science and and, and such things are entirely rewritten are, are completely different there were things we were capable of doing that that, 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 that there was no explanation for Midas you break the laws of physics and science on a weekly basis perhaps there is more that you are capable of here in the world you know as well, perhaps more than you know. I, I don't know if I, I, I break the laws of, of science, I, I use them. Academics, Midas academics, and Victor, my grim, silent, stoic sentry, what did you learn? I learned that when you're fighting through hell to get back to your family, kind of shits to know that uh, your family doesn't want you no more. Hmm. Family is a complicated beast. Many moving parts, many webbed relationships, many hard decisions laid on the heads of a family. Come, there is a carnival attraction that is infested with some small manner of spiritual pests and it is up to us ah. to free it. Oh, okay. I have All a good right. feeling about this, Celestina. I think that yes, the four of you will be quite helpful in this endeavor, and I think perhaps that you might even get a step closer to your own goals. Yes, the way appears. Shall we? Oh. And Mama Lou leaps up in one fluid motion from sitting to standing and just very gracefully and slowly starts to teeter her way uh, towards the stream where she leaps onto one rock and then onto the opposite bank and turns back and looks at you as though inquiring as to whether or not you will follow. Uh, okay. But I, again, stomp through the stream. It's way more fun. Okay, Celestina stomps <laughs> through the stream. Uh, are the rest of you following? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You head back to the carnival. Back to the sound of clanging hammer on metal. Ah, as pictured. Um, well, as... There it is. Audible, uh, and Third. eventually find your way back to Eustace and the Discombobulator. I am going to give you one final chance, you pile of gears and bolts. You listen, or I shall blast you back into the furnace of creation from whence I pulled you. Eustace. 
I think that I'm ready now. And look, our fabulous Wonder Squad has agreed to assist us in dealing with this little issue with the discombobulator. Fantastic, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. All right, now, the four of you, I need you to, to fan out in a defensive position around the discombobulator whilst not making it seem as though you are doing anything in particular. We don't want to rise up any suspicions from the rest of the crew. Why? Because if, if it were known that we had gremlins, they could get into all manner of things in the carnival and chaos. Pandemonium. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Yes. Better not to ask questions to him. What is this? Oh, I, okay. I agree with Victor. That's to just do what Eustace says and go along with the current. All right. So are the four of you going to try and uh, spread out in a defensive manner around the discombobulator without making it seem as though that is what you are trying to do? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Awkwardly. I'll find Probably. some fence posts to lean up against. Um, your choice, folks. Give me a, uh, perform- Actually, no. This is performance. No choice. This is performance. Okay, jeez. Pushy. Aced it. Aced it. I don't have performance. Really? Uh oh so that's a five for Celestine. A Curse of Fives continues. 17. Right, 17 a... for Buster. Wow. He's a repairman. Success got three f- raises. You don't even know. He's I got a four. A four, which is a success for Midas. Uh, I got a 14. A 14, wow. All of you talking about not having performance or Wait. whatnot. I didn't say Does that. tongue tied affect performance? I don't think so. It's like persuasion, I thought. I'll check. Okay. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it does. But you're not using your tongue for this, so even if it does, it won't for this one. As you all just sort of, uh, and very successfully, might I add, fan out and uh, just look like, yeah, Victor, like you said, you're leaning up against a post. Uh, you know, uh, Buster, you're just kind of stretching out, taking a look at all of the work being done around. Uh, uh, the rest of you just kind of move into position, and then uh, Eustace nods and looks over at Mama Lou. And Mama Lou says... All right, I shall begin the consecration. And she walks over to the discombobulator and sits down in front of it and closes her eyes, a serene expression washing over her face as Eustace just sits there and is on the edge of his motorized seat with his arms ready and his fingers on any of the buttons near him. All right. All right, now steady. Don't lose a nerve. Wait for it. Wait until she consecrates it. Mama Lou kind of arches an eyebrow and then goes back to focusing. And then something very strange happens. The ground beneath Mama Lou begins to shimmer just the slightest bit, just the tiniest bit, if you weren't looking, or even if you were, you might assume it was just the movement of the grass with the beams of the sun passing along it, but you can definitely see a slight light flowing outwards from her and filling the space at the base of the discombobulator. And at that moment, the machine gives a lurching and starts to move one of its arms and Eustace cries out, steady, steady, it's working, it's working and the green glow continues to move outwards from Mama Lou as one of the arms of the machine just (laughs) tries to raise itself up off of the ground. And then as Eustace continues to cry out, um, exalted, uh, no wait, exaltations, that's the word. The machine starts to flap its arms and gears up and down, up and down, making giant crashing metallic sounds. And then a series of small, little, foot and a half tall green creatures explode out of the discombobulator in every direction, heading out and scattering throughout the carnival. Get them! Get them! Kill them! Don't let them get away! Okay. Uh, We are in a dramatic task. Oh. You all- I was pulling my leg. Have three rounds 
to get 12 successes, one for each gremlin that is trying to escape the discombobulator. However, because the gremlins are as small as they are, you are at a minus three to do anything oh. to try and affect them. Are you ready? Yes. Wow. Okay. This will be tough. Celestina, a three of clubs. Uh-oh. Oh, Wait, that, that's bad, right? A queen of clubs. Oh no. Oh, club City, take us Victor, to the club. Ace of diamonds. Yes. Buster, king of diamonds. Would anyone like to spend a Benny to redraw their card? Keeping in mind, clubs are a complication and we'll do a minus yes. two this. I will. Midas and Celestina will redraw. Celestina, a 10 of clubs. No. <laughs> Midas, a jack of clubs. Oh my <laughs> God. I'll do it again. So yeah, let's do it. Again. Whoa, you two minus okay. Card. Two more bennies, two more cards. Celestina, Dang. a nine of spades this time. Victor, no, a you jack mean. of hearts. Midas. It's not, it's Midas. Oh, sorry, Midas. Yes, Midas, a jack of hearts. All right, you have all managed to clear out all of the clubs. However, these small little green creatures, uh, let's see while I pull up a picture of them. Uh, oh, yes. First up is going to be Victor. I, I don't know what to do until I see it. Okay, all right, fine. I'll show it to you. I don't okay. know if it's it's probably gonna get keyed out on my camera. Uh, oh, it's so cute. There he is. I'm gonna gremlin. shoot it though. I'm gonna shoot it though. Okay. Um, uh, well, there are twelve of them. I will shoot. I will shoot twelve times this turn. <laughs> um, I assume I can only shoot one at a turn, or is that is that? You will do no, I... Yes, it's a dramatic task, so you can only make one action per turn. One action per turn. Right. 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 Um, Shooting okay. is fine. Shooting well, will work. So would would me casting ammo ammo count as my action and then I have to shoot next time? Uh, yes. So the benefit is casting ammo ammo is not going to be at a minus three because you're not trying to um, do anything to the gremlins. However, you will right. not get any successes if you cast ammo ammo. Um, the only way to get a success is to deal with a gremlin. Okay, well, let's let's make sure these things bleed and die like everything else. So I'm just going to go ahead and shoot the closest one. Give me a shooting roll, Victor, at a minus three. The thing is little. Okie donkey. Uh, oh, no, I rolled two threes. How weird. Uh, I'm going to use a Benny. A Benny to re-roll for Victor. Eek, eek. The little things run around and start scampering mightily for any bit of cover. Oh, no, that's a five. Minus three is... Not gonna. Uh, I will use a curious ticket if I. A may. curious ticket to reroll for Victor. Pretty good at shooting. Wow, I'm rolling garbage today. Um, that's a that's a one after all the, the the calculations are done. But I'm gonna use a Benny. I'm gonna use another Benny. Second to last Benny for Victor. Uh, and I'm gonna use my um, Snickers. I'm gonna take a bite of my Snickers and just get my mojo back. Ah, uh, eat that fun size Snickers. Get a plus two to this roll. Yum 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 yum. Trick or treat a week late. Uh, okay, so that is, that's a six. I'll take it, I'll take a, a six. A six is a success. Um, we'll have to you do. are able to just, you, these things are scampering madly all over the place, but you are able to trail one of them with your gun and fire off a shot, and you see the thing just, poof, just sort of disappear into a puff of like greenish purplish smoke. You did it, boy, you got one, but they're I, getting away from them. I think I got Next it, up I guess. is Buster. Would my shotgun be able to get multiple ones? If you get a success with a raise. Ooh. Okay. Um, so that means you have to get an 11. <laughs> right. Not impossible. Not impossible. Nothing's impossible in Savage well, I, Worlds. I get a plus two, actually, because it's a shotgun. From shooting with your shotgun, that's correct. Oh. So, uh, so uh, I'll try that. All right, give me a shooting roll, Buster. Um, so it's a six minus three, right? Uh, uh, or it's a, I got a four, plus two is a six, minus three is a three. Yeah, that's uh, not gonna be enough. Okay, I'm gonna use a Benny. A Benny Buster to re-roll. Benny Buster. Ooh, that was almost bad. Uh, that wasn't good though. I'm gonna use a one more Benny. One more, Benny. You have two remaining. They're double A's. There we go. Oh, yeah. My man. Uh, let's see. 11 plus 2 is 13. 10. 
Uh, Ted, oh, wait, 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 wait. Also, because you all succeeded on meditating with Mama Lou, you all get a plus one to each of your roles in this oh, combat. Oh, what the, okay. uh, So nice. actually it is at a minus two is the penalty uh, from this. So uh, oh. you got an 11? Um, I got, no, I got a, I got an, an 11 plus two is a 13 minus two. Two is an 11. Is an yes. 11. <laughs> okay, so a success with a raise on that one then, Buster. Um, so you uh, fire your shotgun just madly at a cluster of these things before they can get too far away and they all scatter, but two of them poof, poof, do go up in clouds of smoke as you fire. Well done. Next up is going to be Midas. Okay, uh, so Midas is, uh, sees all the gremlins running away and he's gonna pull out the little miniature figure of, of Leonard on, on riding a, a bucking Bronco thing. Go, All right, don't let him get away. And he's going to spin up the Mr. Twister, which is like a, oh you know, it, it's like a pull top, but he oh, yeah. does the pull top and flings it out at them. And it starts spinning and- And, and the, it plays what song very loudly that I'm supposed to remember to hold you to? This one doesn't <laughs> play a song. Uh, the, it does now. the Buchanan balls <laughs> play Yankee Doodle. This one just goes, yee-haw! Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, right, that's right. Yeah, it's the buck, yes. Okay, so uh, yeah. give me the weird science roll to activate Mr. Twister. Okay, uh, Mr. Twister, here it goes. Uh, that is a nine. A nine? Is that with the, uh, the minus two for? No, so it's a- Seven. It's actually an eight because we get the minus two and then the plus one from the. Well, it was a minus three and then the plus one from Mama Lou. It was minus three Mama and then so a plus it's, one. It's a seven. It's one shy. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'll, uh. You know what? Can I get one curious ticket? One curious ticket to re-roll. Seven is fine, but I'd really like a raise. Seven is fine, but eight is great. That's cocked. Ah. Okay. Oh God, he vanished. Um, I'm gonna keep the seven. Seven it is. Seven is a success as Mr. Twister barrels into the middle of everything. yee The whirlwind starts to build up around your spinning top and all of the gremlins flee in terror. Except for one of them that gets caught up and tossed up into the air. And as it comes flailing down back to earth, it explodes in a poof of smoke taken out. Got him in one. Celestina. Uh, Celestina is gonna use her ace. Ah, uh, all right. You're gonna use your right. ace card. I so wanna use it on uh, spell casting, fire, elemental manipulation, uh, with uh, hinder to slow as many of them as I can get in a burst down, which I assume uh is not very many. So, okay, all right. Um, Unless that's okay. difficult nope. for- That's for totally memory. fine. Okay. So what uh, you cast elemental manipulation and you send out a little blaze of fire right in front of the path of a group of gremlins that were trying to flee, cutting off their access to uh, getting away and also annihilating two of them in the, what must be to them, towering inferno. <laughs> The smoke clouds go off, and I will say, Celestina, you get a plus one on your next um, uh, attempt next round because you used the hinder uh, ah, modifier on that. Okay. So that is the end of the first round. Round two, as more gremlins still continue to flee, and you know, those of you who know gremlins, if you let any one of these get away, this could mean big problems later on for the carnival. Celestina, a seven of clubs. Oh, Dang. my God. Midas, a king of hearts. All right. He Victor, sure is. A joker. Yes. Nice. Got it, baby. Yeah. That means everybody gets an extra Benny, folks, except for me, obviously. And oh Victor, boy. you get a plus two on Sweet. your action this turn. Dope. Eight of spades for Buster. Would anyone like to redraw? Yes. Celestina would. Celestina, not a seven of clubs, but a six of clubs. Totally different. <laughs> oh my God. You have not been doing well with those wow, recalls. Wow, that's one more. Oh, one more. Oh, one more. There's no not a way. six of clubs, but a jack of spades. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's what my say. The way you, you looked did. for a moment. A I know, face. I know. All right, <laughs> so uh, Victor, you can go at any time. Otherwise it's going to be uh, Midas who starts us off. Uh, uh, um. 
if I get a raise on mine, do I also get to shoot two of them like Buster does? Yes. Anything, anytime. It's oh, just a dramatic okay, cool. task. So right. uh, every okay. success or raise is another point. I'm not thinking fourth dimensionally about it. I get it. Think four uh, dimensionally. Uh, okay, then I will do a shooting man's. All right, a shooting man's. Go, go, shooting man's. So essentially, this is a flat roll. Okay, uh, I have rolled two twos, my god. Uh, so I'm gonna use a Benny. A Benny to re-roll, you have one remaining, Victor. Yes, I do. Okay, that's a nine. I did it. A nine is a success with a raise. So okay. you see Wait, two of them trying to scamper away from the chaos and make their way over towards the stables just to get away and get hidden. But you're not gonna let that happen, Victor. Look out, hunk! It's, uh, it's Lunk. Oh, yeah. No, I meant because the what? Oh, okay. Completely yeah. oblivious to everything going on around him, you fire off two of the gremlins at his feet into purple clouds, and he goes back to, um, to brushing Meredith just in the <laughs> middle of this madness. Uh, next up, Midas. Okay, Midas, uh, is, is in kind of a panic, and he sees one of them kind of run towards him, and, uh, he's just gonna try and, like, jump on it and grab it. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna try and wrestle this gremlin into non-existence. Uh, so that sounds like athletics. Yeah, I know I'm not good at it. All right, athletics it at like a, a minus two. To do. You panicked. Yeah. Uh, oh, I aced on both dice though, so. Oh, that's always good, that's always good. I like the way to do it. Okay, so that is, that's a nine minus three, or minus two, right? Yeah. So that's a seven. A seven is a success. So, uh, Victor, you see some of these creatures turn and make a beeline straight for you, running right at you, their little red eyes and gnashy Victor. teeth. I'm oh, sorry, Midas. <laughs> um, I mean, Victor too, that also happens to Victor. It's coincidental okay. and not related. Um, Midas, <laughs> they start running at you and just in a panic, not sure what to do in this amount of time, you decide to just fall on top of one of them and see if you can crush it with your body and with a crunch and a poof, from underneath you, Ooh. you smell the acrid smoke and you know that you have vaporized one of these creatures. Celestina. Uh, I'm going to use my chewy spree. And okay, nom nom nom, and... the whole roll. Yeah, Ooh. and try to get another bunch of them with another spell casting roll. So okay, I'm... so you are eating your candy and adding a two to this. Right, so. So this is gonna be at a plus one all together because you hindered them last time and I gave you a okay. bonus for that. Okay, so. Can I have a curious ticket? You Wait. may, that didn't well, sound yes. good. Sure, yes. Wow, okay, a four. A four is a success. Um, so the creatures start spreading out to run around the little impromptu wall of fire that you have erected. And one of them runs one way and the other runs the other. You can't get both of them. So you try to get the one that's closest and you used what skill? Uh, elemental manipulation. <laughs> Another little ball of flame goes jetting out of your hand and ignites the gremlin on the ground. Poof! It goes up in a puff of smoke. However, a few still remain. Buster. Um, I'm. I will also try shooting again. All right. It worked before. It Might as well before. shotgun these things back to where they came from. Aced it. Uh, what, what's the negative right now? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> minus two, I think. So you should just be making a flat roll with the shotgun. Okay, well, that's a, that's an eight, then. Yes. An eight is a success with a raise. As Eustace cries out, where the hell did Eustace's goggles go? There's too many things. <laughs> he They're, on the They're on your head. They're on your head. They're literally on your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, the headband that is on my moment. head. <laughs> Not the, oh, there are the glasses. <laughs> They're spreading out. <laughs> this is where they're at their most dangerous. Don't let a single one escape. Buster, get them, Buster! As Eustace is screaming in your ears, you try and drown him out and just 
focus on your shot and you see the two things go running off, trying to leave and get into the confusion of the carnival, but you are not going to let that happen. As you sight down the barrels of your shotgun, Mama Lou just opens one eye and says, please do not shoot me, Buster, and then goes back to focusing. As you fire your shot, right over her head, the buckshot goes and annihilates the last two gremlins. All right, with got them in two. time to spare. Ah, well, <clears throat> Mama Lou stands up. That was bracing, but I think perhaps uh, this is enough excitement for me for now. I must rest up for the performance tonight. Well done, you four, and if I am not mistaken, I believe I hear the sound of slightly sarcastic applause. What? Oh. Oh. Oh, Meg Linger! Well done. I see that we have named you for the Wonder Squad for no small reason. Here you are protecting our venerable institution from an infestation of little green men. Gremlins, specifically. <laughs> ah, yes. Eustace, uh, do you mind if I borrow your four assistants here for a brief word? And Eustace just sort of makes a, a non-committal noise. He's already, like, zoomed up to the discombobulator and is getting to work getting it uh, back in, in operating shape. Well then, you four, follow. And Nightlinger takes off, just striding across the grounds of the carnival, using his skull-tipped walking stick to drive his way forward, not waiting for you. I follow him. Yeah. Celestina, of course, you follow off after Nightlinger. The rest of you, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you all wander back to Nightlinger's wagon just in time to see the little open panel at the bottom of it slide into place and clicked close. As Nightlinger walks up the steps and gives that little compartment a playful tap with the bottom of his cane, he opens the door to the wagon and turns back and makes a deep sweeping bow, inviting you all in. Thank you, Nightlinger. <clears throat> I so take a few peanuts out of the bowl of peanuts. <laughs> There's always a bowl of peanuts right outside the door. That is important. <laughs> um, you all walk inside into the dark and somewhat shady interior of Nightlinger's wagon. Uh, met with the curious sight, as per usual, of his living quarters covered the walls, the ceiling, and the floor in names. Uh, your name in particular stands out to each of you. You remember where you carved it into this wagon, and every time you walk in, your eye goes unfailingly towards it. An ever-present reminder of your binding to Nightlinger and his carnival as he takes a seat over in the plush red chair in the corner and gestures at the cushions arrayed on the ground for you. He sits and swings a leg over the arm of the chair and regards you, his yellow eyes shining out from the shadows underneath his top hat. I haven't had a chance to welcome you home properly. So, welcome home. Thank you, Nightlinger. Now, I'm sure you're probably all tired and bored of telling your stories by now, and don't worry, I won't ask you to repeat it, your odyssey through the lands beyond. I'm sure I'll pick up the details from everyone else along the way. No, I just have one question for you. And he leans forward in his chair and looks from each of your faces to the other. Did you use my name at all? 
when you were down there? What? Yo. My name, Victor. Did I guess you maybe, sling it about? Oh, maybe mentioned it one time, I think. But I'm not sure. To I believe whom? So. Or oh, the was to the gray the gray wall thing that we couldn't get past. I, I mentioned it to. What was her name? I don't know uh, who you're talking about. The uh, woman Winifred? in the clock tower. Winifred. Winifred. I mentioned it to a woman we met there. She 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 was from the outside like we were, and she, she I told from... her that maybe you would be able to find a way to help get her out. She's from 1947, I believe. Was she a local? No, local. she I was mean, from... a native. A native? Mm, no, of, of the hunting place. grounds? Oh, South no. Cena. I'm sorry. She, she from, she from, a, uh, she said she explorer if with a particular group, a explorers club, something. So this gray lady and this Winifred person, that's it? I think so. Did we mention the to the empty? No. Lottie? No. You don't seem entirely sure. It that's was not very exactly confusing. comforting. Well, Lottie was probably there both times we mentioned it. We didn't mention it to troll. Why would we throw a boulder at us? You'll have to forgive us for our memory might be a little foggy from climbing through hell to get back here. Well, oh. I suppose that's fair. What no about you, Theo? Oh. Who? Theo. Who? Oh, you were, yes, uh, uh, Theo was a, a, I suppose, a dead uh, sheriff of town we were ghost in. Oh, we didn't encounter them until outside of the hunting grounds, so. Oh, well, then that is of no consequence to me. Fine. Well, that's it then. You feel that you are up to performing your roles this evening? Uh, sure, y yes. Uh, that depends. You still want us to? Victor, am I detecting an edge to your words? I don't think I've ever said a word without an edge to it. True. You all seem a bit quiet and reserved. Is there something on your mind? It's just the, the that uh, we got lost in, in hunting ground and and we did, it's, it's, it's nothing. We know that the, 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 the decision to be made is um, a good reason, but that you decide not to um, come get us. And it's just, you know, it, it's just a rumor going around and it gets on their skin, he's all. And, and we know you wouldn't not come to help us. Tell me, Celestina. What is exactly this rumor that's going around? Oh, that uh, the carnival wanted to uh, come back to hunting ground to get us, and you said no. And this, I take it, is what is the bee in all four of your bonnets? It well, also seems as though and I, I, I am never the, the, the greatest at, at, at reading intonations, as it were, but uh, it seems that you're talking to us as, as though we have done something wrong when it feels very much like, like us getting uh, out, out of, of our, our predicament was uh, uh, an achievement. And so it was. And here you are. And maybe, perhaps, 
continuing to live the life that you fought so hard to get back to is reward enough for the work that you have done. As to the rumor, do you all feel this way about it? Well, I will affirm it for you. It is no rumor. That is what occur. Can you at least enlighten us as to why you would make that decision? I had assumed that the carnival would uh, look after its own. Buzz. The carnival does look after its own. That's one of our rules, of course, as you well know. The family always comes first. The family, Buzz. As I expected you of all people to understand. Now, I sympathize with your situation and I know from both guessing and personal experience how trying and difficult this must have been for you but you must look at things from my point of view the bulk of my family was saved by your selfless actions in the hunting grounds we made it out and to the other side and though they might wish it would it have been wise or prudent of me to risk the rest of the family and also risk undoing the very sacrifice that you had made for the rest of us and to what end? What would you have me do? Send them all in to leap off the path into the darkness below and just trust that we would end up in the same place and trust that we would be able to find you and escape it all? Tell me, is that a prudent choice? See, see, I told you all, this would be a good reason, and this seemed like a good reason. N Nightlinger, now, you can't, you can't tell me, knowing everything you, you have at your disposal, and, 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 and the fact that you even, even use this method of, of conveyance, that that you don't have to have some sort of meth method or, 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 or plan if if something like like what happened to us happens Midas I will tell you no such thing listen I understand that you're upset perhaps even rightfully so although I think with time you will come to see the wisdom in the course of action that I pursued, but still, you are back. You made your way, and here you are, successful and victorious, and wiser and more skilled and experienced for it. Now, it seems to me that to go back and dicker about what could have been done or what should have been done or who thought, who said could have been done better is immaterial and keeps us focused on the past when there are such wondrous things in our very, very near future. Like what? Well, the carnival opens tonight in Bull's Plain. And if the information that I received in Iron Spring is to be trusted, then I think that we shall have a most fortuitous visitation this evening. And I think that I would like the four of you to be my eyes on the ground Unless, of course, there is still some unfinished business between the four of you and I. No, no, I'd be, uh, I'd be happy to be, uh, to help. Yeah, I'm, what you say makes sense. That's, that's why I shot the path in the first place was to save the rest of the carnival. 
But uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Nightlinger. It's it's just a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. I've I've given a lot to this this carnival, and I was not having my back. That kind of hurts, but uh, you're right. And we're back. Some of us had to literally crawl through hell to get back here. And I think that maybe it would be prudent to uh, at least afford us some courtesy and not um, play with our emotions, as it were. If there's something you're playing at here, well... I think we have a right to know. Nothing I'm playing at, Buster. Just a bit of good news to turn the carnival's fortunes, all of our fortunes, in a more positive direction. And I will thank you to remember that there is a difference between not risking the lives of my other wards foolishly and not having your back, Buster. You made it out, didn't you? Right. Yes, sir. Nightlinger. Has this ever happened? Has, has this ever happened to anyone else? The people we met in the hunting grounds they, they didn't think, seem to think that, that the making your way out was something that could be done. I don't know, Midas, and I will be honest with you. I don't know that in this particular moment that I care one whit because I like to keep my eyes focused on the present and the very near future, Mr. Midas Buchanan, and I believe there is very exciting news coming just around the bend for us. Now, if the four of you are feeling up to putting on a show and entertaining the very just fun and excitement starved individuals of Bull's Plain, well, I'd be much obliged. Yes. Yes, I, I think we can do that. I I, I, I I can do my job, yes. That is all we can ask of you. So, we have an accord. He says, looking from each of you and his eyes lingering on Victor. Yes. Yeah. I ain't got my head in the clouds about... What kind of relationship me and you have, Jebediah? My name's etched on that wall just like everybody else's. I know what that means. But when you treat people like dogs, eventually they're going to bite you. Now, what you said makes sense. Ain't no reason to send everybody in after the four of us. Sure, we're good at what we do, but we ain't worth the whole carnival. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. About the way you treat us. By the way you treat these people. Victor. I appreciate what you're saying. And I hear you. Now please. Everyone. On your way out. Do grab a peanut. And that <laughs> is where we will end things tonight. Next. Snakes? What? Where? Snakes? 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 Oh, snakes. snakes. Oh, snakes. Where are the snakes? Yeah. snakes. A snake. It, it snake is, is snake time. Midas has a super mild peanut allergy, but he still grabs the peanuts to 
not seem uh, like rude. You don't want to be rude. The peanuts are, you know, kind of, I guess, an important thing. Um, they do give him hives. <laughs> Real quick here at the end, everyone raise your drinks. We have a couple last minute toasts. Zwater ZA would like us to toast. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Welcome back to the real world. Yeah. Friends. Set them up Feels and good. knock them down. Thank you very much, Zwater ZA. Feels really good. And oh finally, Vampire54 would like us to toast. Fight the Nightlinger. Let the blood flow. Mwah! Mwah! <laughs> Skulls for the Skull Throne. Uh, where'd that come from? Weird. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Vampire54. Puma Man Redux would like to give a point of extra credit. Uh, nope, a curious ticket to the table, but we will carry that over to next week because I just saw it now. But the mysterious strangers in chat in the final hour unlocked the final reward tier for the night, folks. Ooh. The final reward tier. So let me just bring this little guy up into view here. Oh, oh. <gasps> Hey! Is that the plot what? armor marker? Does oh, that plot. mean that chat has seen fit to award you with a token of, oh, wait, oh, I dropped the plot armor into this vat of radioactive ooze. Oh wait, no, oh is that no. Good? Is it bad? It could be good. It could green. Be good. It's changing. This looks the same color. It's green now. Oh, it's keyed out. That's why. It's oh. changing. <laughs> it's changing into green plot armor. They have unlocked super plot armor. Not only does this token of plot armor persist until you all choose to use it, but it will not soak one wound from any attack. It will soak all wounds from ah. any attack. And any one of you can choose to use it at any point until it is used up. So that one token of super plot armor inspired by TMNT 2's super shredder scene at the end of it <laughs> is now on the table and in play Ooh, thanks so to weird. the mysterious strangers in chat. So thank Yay! you all thank very you. much for unlocking that. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being here, being an awesome community, um, unlocking a new Dom song for, for next week, an, an original um, one for our finale. I'm excited. And next week is oh, indeed sorry. our season one finale here at 8 p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash saving throw show. Next Friday night will be the season finale of Wild Cards. But, but don't worry, don't worry. Because even after that ending, a new beginning will begin. It has had to be pushed from this Sunday, but next Sunday, which I believe is the 15th? Yes. Is that the accurate? Yes. Sunday the 15th will be the season premiere of New Pantheon. Well, the series pr premiere, really, of the new series of New Pantheon. New That new will Pantheon. be happening at what time on Sunday the 15th, Dom? 4 p.m. Pacific time, so that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. New Pantheon Academia using the overarms system, which is a, a almost brand new system, uh, just recently finished its Kickstarter and came out. Uh, Ricky Jet Studios uh, has developed it, and we have some neat things that we're gonna be giving away. Um, and uh, it's anime inspired, if you'd like JoJo or Persona uh, or My Hero Academia, um, uh, all hey. those things are referenced um, and very heavily, and it's a great cast. Uh, we've got uh, Mika in it. You might uh, recognize Mika. She was on an episode of Pirates of Salt Bay and also has been on tons of things like Colock 1991 and stuff at Hyper. Uh, Kelly Nugent, who has been on many things here. Hey, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Kelly. Uh, Aki and Eric, who are old hands at uh, New Pantheon and other things, uh, are, will uh, both be returning to New Pantheon. And, of course, the GM, the headmaster, uh, Stephen Pope. Stephen Pope. Back. So Oops. that's exciting. Oops. Um, Definitely uh, keep um, an eye out for news and updates about that, mm -hmm. folks, on our social media. Uh, you can follow Saving Throw at Saving Throw Show on any social media network of your choice. You can follow Wild Cards at Wild Cards RPG on those social media networks. And sorry, Dom, you had something else you were saying. Oh, I was just going to say uh, Tuesday, Tales from Salt Bay is back, and we're finishing the Engine Hearts tale or Engine Heart tale from Eric. So come back uh, this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific time for uh, that tale and find out what we're going to be doing next and who's going to be running the next show uh, after that. And then stay tuned to our social media 
tomorrow for a um, another announcement. Yeah, right. new announcement. We got announcements and news and things crawling out of the woodwork, falling out of our ears and crawling out from between our toes. That's why you have to keep up with Saving Throws social what? media to see what new exciting things are coming down the pipeline for you to enjoy. And so many are, but until such time as that news is released, we ask you mysterious strangers, go now, rest. Spread the word of what you have seen here this day. Tell all the tales of the Wild Cards RPG Carnes and bring your flock to the chat, which is just kind of our weird way of saying, if you're having fun, like tell more people, it's cool. <laughs> is it our weird way or your weird way? My weird way. All right, that is enough for us tonight, folks. Thank you, you mysterious strangers. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our mods. I don't remember to say this after every single show, but seriously, you guys are great. Thank you for the help that yes. you provide for us. Thanks for taking a little bit off of Dom's plate so that Dom can focus on playing the game instead of also running the channel. Uh, you yes. guys are fantastic. and we thank you thank mm -hmm. you very much for your assistance yes. it means a lot to us all of you for being here we appreciate it we hope that you will join us next week for the season finale but until Ooh. then we leave you <gasps> with finger guns <laughs> minor dramatic tonight drama 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 <laughs>